Sie bei der anderen Treffer nach 10, 2 dritte Versuche sehen wir dann gleich die Versuche von Naja Füllers und Anne Berger. So, Naja Füllers, jetzt noch die 4,13 Meter. Die U18-Athletin mit eben persönliche Bestleistung gekommen, 4 Meter. Und dabei bleibt es sicher mit der persönlichen Bestleistung. Zum ersten Mal 4 Meter sich vorne nach Hause. Naja, Kurz. Okay, good afternoon and welcome to the Sparkazen Indoor Tour meeting here in Dortmund. It's a World Athletics Continental Tour bronze label meeting. Fantastic arena. Fits in 2,000, 2,500 spectators we're, we're hoping to see today. Women's pole vault taking place just at the moment. We are going to join the men's 60 meter hurdles. Heats are going to kick start at 2 o'clock. So uh, we'll bring you those lineups in a sec. But the bar at 4 meters 13. So the action has been going on throughout the whole day here in this uh, beautiful helmet corny call here in Dortmund. And uh, let's see what Ann Berger can do here in the pole vault. 4.13, only one has gone clear. Ooh, and uh, yeah, not, not today. Not going to happen. A lot of athletes struggling at 4.13. Ella Buckner cleared four metres. And Berger, four metres on a second attempt. And Nia Fuller's four metres on her second attempt as well. So three in this competition left. So it's uh, really getting to the pointy end in the women's pole vault. But uh, yeah, there is Anne Berger. And she's going to go straight back up. And try again. So, good speed on the runway. She needs a good plant on the pole. And again, just failed to really plant that pole there. And she's not going to be happy with that. Frustrated, but however, it's early days. It's the new year. And happy new year to you all if you are tuning in. She's got a whole season to correct herself. A winter campaign, an indoor campaign, one would expect. And then into the outdoors as well. Huge year ahead of us in 2024. We all know what's looming. It's the Paris Olympics in the summer but not only that it is the European Championships we've got a lot of European athletes here at this meeting today and those European Championships are going to take place in Rome quite early on in June they, they're going to squeeze them in before the Olympics it's exciting to see what will happen there but uh, we'll start to run you through the lineups for this men's 60 meter hurdles coming up but uh, before we do that a bit of context a bit of background to this fantastic meeting here in Dortmund it's got great history it all started in 1995, and between 95 and 2004, it played host to some really high caliber international aesthetics. Four and a half thousand spectators used to set out this hall, and um, it had a bit of a period, a time off, if you like, and um, in 2018, the meet was revived, it came back, and um, it also saw some renovations during that time. I think, believe, around about 2019, it was renovated, so, they uh, increased the lanes from uh, four to six to allow for more international athletics. But look at this. That was the uh, results of that 60 meters youth race that we uh, just saw before coming on air. And that was the uh, female final as well. Brugman, 788 personal best. Lots of personal best. Well, how about that? It's only January and already clocking your personal best. But um, track records and, and notable performances. Well, Yuri Bozakowski, remember him. Olympic champion over the 800, that famous race in Athens. Used to run a perfectly split 800 meters, didn't he? And um, well, he ran a world under 20 indoor record here, 144.35. I wonder if we'll see that today. Robert Farkin goes in the men's 800. What a talent. German national champion. And the questions are, is he more of a 1500 meter runner these days with his 332 he ran last year? Well, he's back and we look forward to seeing him here today in Dortmund. 
Let's have a look. Ella Buckner in second attempt, 4 metres 13. Not quite. Not quite. It is a big jump from 4 metres up to 4.13. Four twenty. Do apologise. This women's pole vault competition moving through very swiftly indeed. But uh, as you can see, just to the right of picture, there we are. And you can really get in context how long the straights are on this track. The sixty metres um, stops way before those bends start, doesn't it? But uh, there you are, Romanian on the inside, Alin. Great performer. Watch out for me. It's all about lane four. It's all about Yaki Aoyoha of Q8, the Asian Game champion in 2023. Now, that was in October, so he wouldn't have had much of an off-season. But uh, there you are, Anton Alin Inut of Romania, 770, his personal best. Four times national champion. And yeah, the Balkan Indoor champion in 2022. Stefan Volzer, 793 personal best. Well, he's going to have to run a pretty smart race in order to qualify for this men's final. It's uh, top two and four fastest losers that will sneak into that final. And obviously that gives us eight in that final. But there's the man you want to look out for. You cube, how are you up? Four times national champion. He's got the 1310 hurdle time, by the way. 1335. That's a national record. Elmo Lacka. Tim Eichemann as well. Big, tall, towering figure, isn't he? But uh, very, very good. Hurdler over the 60 meters. He's explosive and he was a national champion this time last year. Well, in his 2023 indoor campaign, he came away with that German national title. Mark Eden as well, the Netherlands. He's another one who will uh, look at just trying to qualify for that final, Tim Costa. And of course, the benefit of qualifying for that final is uh, many of the athletes wouldn't have opened up their campaign. Very few seasons best alongside their names yet. So this is the first race of what promises to be a fantastic year ahead of us in 2024. So, Anton, Volza, Aljuha, Laka, Eichermann, Haydn, and Costa. That's your lineup. The man from Q8 in four. Perhaps the favourite. He's got the fastest personal best on paper. He's the Asian Games champion. He's also one of the fastest over the 110 metre hurdles as well. Laka, national record holder from Finland, is the fastest on paper over that 110 hurdles. He's the figure in the black. So away they go then. Laka right next to Al Yuha. Dead center as well. But it's going to be Al Yuha who edges it at the moment. Can Laka get back into it? Do you know what? That was a dip in a half because I think he may have just snuck Al Yuha. But both of them won't mind. Heat, first race of the season. They're going to be into that final. There's your, there's your two autos. Let's have a look what is coming up on our screen. They've given it to Yaka. Ooh, 300th of a second in it. So the Finn comes out on top. Aoyoha second and Haydn in third. Well, there you are. Seven, 787 in. Oh, 790 actually. We'll go down the results and see what that fastest loser spot is. Well, here comes Claddy Huck. Just entering this competition in the pole vault. Ooh, 420. Couldn't quite clear it this time around. So, warmed up and ready to go. Let's see what she can do on her second and potentially third attempt as well. So, great running in that men's 60 hurdles. Let's have a look. I'm going to try and bring you and update you on what that fourth spot was because it's first two and four fastest losers. So they're really not, 
not really knocking many people out at all. And often you'll find that indoors, you know, where they can, where the timetable allows. They'll give they'll give sprinters a couple races just to uh, kind of bust the rust, as it were, this time of year. But Elmo Laka won it 7.70. And uh, Yukiba Yoha in second, 7.73. Mark Hayden in third, 7.78. Tim Eichemann, 7.87. And Stefan Volzer is in that fastest loser spot at the moment. 7.90. And he knew Anton. Eight seconds and three hundredths of a second sits in that fastest loser spot. So here we go. Ella Buckner, 4.20. Just not happening for her today, is it? Unfortunately. Nonetheless, great, great jumping. She'll go to the coach, get some assistance in her local arena. Well, you really do appreciate how tight these bends are, actually. I was kind of studying the track beforehand we've got a few distance races that 800 i was speaking about that uh, wasn't on the program initially robert farkin almost requested it they uh bought a field together last minute and um you wonder if a track like this is conducive to that 400 800 meter running just because these banks are so tight on the flip side to that long straight give athletes a chance to really get into their running and you know get to that top speed and also it makes it easier to overtake indoors notoriously hard to overtake so if there's more opportunity to overtake less pushing less shoving um so we'll see how the athletes fare over it but uh here we are then you the ukrainian yana adiku 420, well, she'll be a little bit nervous. Well, she'll be very nervous now because this is her first attempt. This is her first height, her entry height, if you like, and she's got to go clear. Otherwise, she will be out the competition, and that is no way to start 2024 at all. Well, here you are, line up for Heat 2 then. Well, Van Helmont, Haramani in there as well, Zelez, Morty, Gertz, Aziz, Sevla, and Wagner. Right on the outside, Josh Wagner. Youngest in the field. Hermani. Felix Hermani, the German. He's 21 years of age, so. Oh, Joost Van Helmont then. Being introduced by that stadium announcer, there's Noah Felix Harmani. 8.24 personal best. Well, he's going to have to run a personal best if he wants to make that final. 8.03 is the current mark. Well, Sellers, the Hungarian. Fantastic athlete, 13.56, 110. He's a two-time national champion over in Hungary as well. He's well known in that part of the world. 7.70 personal best for Morty. Manuel Morty, Watkin Hidu. He's a national champion in 2023, actually. 1364 outdoors. He's 110, but uh, here we are. Job Gerds. 764. National indoor champion last year. Over in the Netherlands. And he DNF'd those under 23 European championships, so he'll be disappointed with that. And he go one better in 2024. There's his S, 785, personal best. So you could look at this to say this is a slightly slower. Of the uh, of the two heats, the big favourites definitely did come in heat one. Big Dad Sevler then. Uh, Seven seventy, two-time Balkan champion. Was out in Budapest for the World Championships as well. There's Wagner then. Completes the lineup on the outside. He's all smiles. He's excited to get going. Disney indeed. So Azez was European champion, European under 20 champion, shall I say, back in 2016. Daniel Azez. So he goes in this as well. Sellers. Mm. 
54. I'm interested to uh, to see. Morty and Job Gertz. It really is those middle lanes that you want to keep an eye on. The athletes set themselves, the nerves, the tension. They'll just want to get a clean run, just get a run under their belt this time of year. That's what it's about, of course. Well, ranking points up for grabs as well. So away they go. Nice clean start. Who's going to rise first? Is that Gertz coming through in the centre? Yes, it is. He looks very, very strong indeed. Job Gertz gets the job done. Excuse the pun. But uh, very, very smooth, wasn't he? Well, he wasn't quite first to rise. That looked like it was uh, Celis, the Hungarian. But uh, after that first hurdle, there was no looking back for Gerds. 770 as well. So equal to that first heat. So he's showing good speed. He can look at the final. And um, he's definitely able to shot at taking that, taking a win in the final. They shrug it off, and uh, there you can see, well, the track was renovated 2019. Uh, I did a bit of fact-checking just a while ago, and uh, they introduced an extra couple lanes, because it was it was four lanes, which made it very, very tight. I mean, the atmosphere used to be terrific in this meeting. Late 90s, early 2000s, it was really one of the most established indoor meetings. They're looking to build on that and get it back to that level here in Dortmund. And the button in. Well, this is to win the competition. If she can go clear at 420. Oh, no. Well, she still leads the way, does Buckner. And um, even though she didn't go clear at 420, I believe that will be good enough to, uh, to stay out in front. Unless Yena Hakliyuk of Ukraine can go clear on her third attempt. So let's have a little look at that timetable, familiarize ourselves with what's to come here this afternoon. There was, uh, oh, just before that, let's quick run, quick run down results of that 60 meter hurdles, man. Job Gerds there, he took the win. Now my lacquer as well. And there you are, we'll get that line up for the, for the final to you very shortly indeed. So, Paddy Cook. Can she do? Can she go clear? Oh! Oh! How frustrating! Well, for a minute you thought she'd done it. She thought she'd done it as well. But three attempts and she is out. Just three attempts as well. She'll perhaps be kicking herself. But this early on in the season probably doesn't matter too much. But they have got the world indoors to look forward to. She might have wanted to just bank that qualification mark early on. Oh, she's just not going to be able to. That's frustrating. There we are, bringing you those results. No mark at all for Fadi Cook. But uh, good day for the Germans. Ella Buckner with the victory. 4-13 went clear. Season's best. Obviously, you're going to see a lot of season's best. If an athlete hasn't competed in 2024, they're going to be automatically given a season's best. Um, and Berger in second as well, equal season best in Nia Fuller in uh, third, four metres for her. Clara Lentz, Zoe Jakob and Leah Lox, 370. So that's the women's pole, what the men's pole, what is to come later. And what a field, a whole step up. Well, Olympic champion, world medalist, he's just a supreme talent. Coming near the end of his career, but he's going to go in that pole vault. Got a fantastic international lineup. More on that a little bit later. For the timetable of the meeting, then we got the 1500 uh, B section or B final, as they're going to call it now. And um, well, competitive race nonetheless. It's uh, quite a, quite a few men operating around about that uh, 350 mark for 1500, just inside. A few around the four minute mark, and a few outside. So I think we're going to get a get a contrast of ability in this one that we can enjoy and get stuck into average age of around about 18 years as well so they are youngsters it's a b final but it's almost an under 20 race as well uh, world lead at the moment 344 well there's a mark that uh, i'm looking at silas zoltan and uh, marco zeitman can they go for that they're the two fastest in the field both with 347 personal bests 
and in fact a hundredth of a second separating from the same club, the uh, Blue Munster Club in Germany. And uh, in fact, Marco Zeitman is just two years younger than his teammate. So this will be the first race of many and it's interesting, especially on the continent here in Europe. The cross-country season seems to be of focus pre-Christmas, after Christmas. Everyone turns their attention to indoors. There is, of course, cross-country competitions that still take place. The World Cross Country. Uh, Britain have a strong cross-country heritage as well. And uh, it's many, just like we see in a continental tour on the indoor circuit, there's still some operating over the mud and the grass and the hills around Europe in the new year. So what can we expect in this race? Well, Silas Zaltman looks like he's the favourite. Virtually equal personal best with Marco Zeitman. And uh, Tam O'Dona as well. He goes in this. He is from Dortmund, so look out for him. That's his home club, 353 personal best. Flotty and Zeitel, 359 personal best for him. Fabio Halbonner, Tristan Kufold. Well, there's the man. I was just talking about Marco Zeitman. 21 years of age now. 347.99. Well, it would be unlikely to get a personal best first race out in the new year. But it uh, depends how athletes prepare. It depends uh, how it fits in their calendar. Well, Florian Zeitel, 359, 54 personal best dipped inside, four minutes. That's a marker of a strong domestic athlete, four minutes. Well, that's Tamo Dona. Just 19 years of age. 3.53, so he's on the way up, he's improving every race, and I think that's the age you've got to be careful of, that's the age which uh, can host a few shock performances just through development, your training, they, uh, it's very easy to up your training, you presume that uh, at a young age you're not doing huge amounts of volume, so once you start to increase that volume up your training, your body adapts to that, you really can take off chunks off your personal best, many of these men have run outside four minutes, but uh, you can see them running inside that mark. Well, Kumaka is uh, very intense, isn't he? He really is looking to uh, psych out his opposition. Oh, stop. 4.12 personal best. And this is, uh, these are all running for the Dortmund Club. All these in red. Sparkcase, their sponsor, Sparkcase Bank. Last back and then 411 personal best. All serious. Well, they would all train together. They'll be club teammates, a lot of them. Working towards the personal best and then national championships through the age groups throughout 2024 Well, that's all of them then. We're going to have a waterfall start just to get around this first bend, these tight bends. Like I said before, I'm interested to see how these bends play out here. It's because the straights are very, very long. The straights must be around about 80 meters long in this arena. And the bends, goodness, just about 20 meters or so, 20, 30 meters, you'd expect. Look how they just whiz around. And they're going to just, those three on the outside, they're the big names, really. They're just going to file in. No pace make up for these gentlemen so it's who takes up the early running and that looks like Zeitman Marco Zeitman who wants to go straight to the front he's in 10 and he wants to really test himself give himself or lay down a good marker see exactly where he is let's have a look at that 200 meter split it's over on the far side 30 75 whoa that's quick that's PB territory for these gentlemen 61 and a half lapping and he's round about 347 348 1500 meter speed Bang on the money, 60s would be 345. That'd be a nice marker, benchmarker for these gentlemen. I mentioned before as well, that world lead, three minutes and 44 seconds. Of course, we are gonna see that time get obliterated over the next couple of months on this indoor campaign. As we build towards that World Athletics Championships in Glasgow, European Championships play host 
few years ago to that 2019 we've got a few european champions from 2019 in fact in glasgow and competitors there who are back here in dortmund so marco zeitman still up at the front doing a fantastic job very very even at the moment 30 75 he went through 400 around about 60 seconds as well it's pb territory they would have trained indoors one would expect beauty of indoors as you really can hit the splits in training this time of year the weather just torrent 131 34 so slips a little bit but still on pb territory if he's strong if he's got those winter miles in he'll be able to hang on to this and behind him well it looks like is that done up behind him try and identify i believe i think it is and uh well silas zaltan who i thought would be here today didn't see him on the start list so didn't see him on the on the preview either so we can just presume that uh he has scratched from this race Tamo Dona in second, there he is, look, he's looking strong, isn't he, Dona? I mentioned him before, he's just 19 years of age, he's going to have a big jump in performance, he's a 3.53 runner, he's going in uncharted waters at the moment as uh, Marco Zeitman still leads the way, and this is the 1,000 metre clocking, so 2.33, they're on for something just inside 3.50 at the moment, over 1,500, expect to have a big sprint finish, we're hoping that Florian Zeitel as well can hang on, because his personal best 3.59, if he hangs in there, He's going to be ever so close to that. Imagine that, breaking a PB on your first run out in 2024. That's exactly what these athletes will be looking for. But look at this, Marco Zeitman showing his class, perhaps showing his age as well. He's got a couple years on at Tamar Dona, three to be exact, and he's just easing away. They're coming into the final 300 meters of this race now. This is going to be the bell as they come round for the penultimate time down the home straight. And that gap's gone from a meter or two to about 10 to 15. Zeitman, he's got the nice gap. Well, can he hold on? He's going to have to run inside 30 seconds to break 350. Perhaps just fading a little bit. And perhaps ambitious from Derner as well. In second, he's going to get eaten up here by Florian Zeitel. Dern up and hit by the lactic sniper, as they'll say. But uh, he's got an interesting career ahead of him if he sticks at it. First one out this season. He can't be too hard on himself. Here goes Marco Zeitman, though. It's been all his race today. No one can get near him, really. What's he going to run, though? That's what we're looking at. Look at the clock. 3.50 in 20 seconds. That's a massive PB for Zaitel there as well. And just outside his season's best for Tamo Derna. But he was aggressive, wasn't he? And um, it is all about experimenting in these races. Well, the early season, you've got little to lose in these sorts of fixtures. There he is, I'm at well, did it the hard way, was patient early, looked around, looked to his left, looked to his right, no one wanted to take it up, so he took the race by the scruff of the neck and just pushed and pushed and pushed, 350 he'll be happy with that, good strong running from him. Very good indeed, and there you are, I said Zeitel will, uh, will run a personal base, he did, 3.3.0.0. And uh, Derna, 3.56.31, so a few seconds slower than he's already run this year. Blumacher, 3.59. What a run from him, nipping inside four minutes. Wow, per lifetime best before that was 4.02. The man from Dortmund, Corsten, four flat. Warnicke, 4.01. Flanken, 4.02. So good running from all those gentlemen. We'll see a few more of these results fine in Straub. 405. You're seeing personal bests already by people's names. They certainly did with Winter World. Next on the track, after that 1500, we got the 400. Oh, what a race. It's a bit of an indoor favourite, isn't it? The 400, the way they're in lanes for the whole race, the way they have to go up and down, the banks at speed as well. And definitely these outer lanes, I mean, in this arena here in the corner Hall. Those outer lanes have got to be favoured, haven't they, for a 400 metre runner. It's going to be very, very hard for those on the inside to negotiate those bends. But uh, it's almost the Dortmund Club Championships. I must. Gustav Lewandowski coming from Glockweed, Germany. 
just 17 years of age, Lewandowski, so he's got a season's best of 50-47. Look out for him in that men's 400. But there you are, there's the results. Full confirmation for you. Marco Zeitman, Florian Zeitel, and So, good running from all those gentlemen. And so PB still a little bit further down the field as well. Bastian Nossen for 16-20. And uh, a couple of BNSs in there as well. Did not show or did not start. So there's the timetable we can look forward to. Next up, we've got the 400 Mini Regional Men. That's why I said potentially a little bit of Dortmund Club Championships going on. 400 Men's, 800 Men, which wasn't originally on the timetable. But we can look forward to Robert Farkin in that 1500 women, 800 meter women as well, 60 meter men's final after their heats, and 1500 meter men's final to uh, to round off the afternoon. Here we are: Glover, Jetnet, Start, Farber, and Nahanu. Yeah, no, nah, no, there to complete the lineup. Let's see what these men can produce. A lot of a lot of these men around about 50 seconds for 400. It's going to be awfully hard to uh, to go inside that um, indoors. You, you really do. That is their indoor personal bests. Excuse me, but uh, yeah, you really do have a pretty strong differential between your indoor and outdoor personal best if you're a 400 meter runner. It's very, very rare that uh, your indoor time will be faster and that's across all events. And in fact, well there's Farber as well. 50-24. Most famous red Dortmund colours. They'll know this track very, very well, these athletes. Perhaps that is an advantage and you know Leonor Nahamnum on the outside, it's a big advantage to be on those outer lanes. The further out you are, the easier it is to negotiate those turns. Well, Yanis Detner, he knows what he's doing, doesn't he? Custom to this crowd, lots of friends and family in the crowd. Paul Grover as well. 51 second personal best, that's indoors. So, no Lewandowski, didn't make the trip over, so it is an all Dortmund final, shall we say, in this men's 400 meter regional race. Glover, Detner, Stad, Farber, and Nahumni. for their starters quarters well away they go then as you can see very very hard to get out on that bend even the fact that you're on a slant when you're starting for these 400 runners that will take some practice well they would have had the chance to do that though especially the fact they're all from Dortmund this is their home track they're gonna break over on this far side now they'll break now no one's everyone's a little bit hesitant to cut across it is Nahamno who's going to cut across first, and he has stolen a march on the field. He's going to accelerate around that bottom turn. What can he do on the back straight, these long straights? This is where you need to get into your running. If you're going to make a move, you kind of got to make it now, unless you're going to save it for the home straight. But Nahamne, whoa, he came off. He used, he accelerated off that final hill, but he's being closed down now. Oh, his club mate's going to get him. Is that Glover? It's Farber, isn't it? Who's going to take it? Yes, it is. 50.7. Well, strong run in the end. Well, Yenning Farber, Whew, he knew exactly what he was doing. Catapulted himself off that last turn, and that's really what you need to do. You don't want to come up on anyone's shoulder unless you're going to go straight by them because if you have to run wide on these tracks with these tight bends, it really does take it out of you. You don't get the same drive through the floor. Certainly not as efficient, that's for sure. So, well, there you are. Yeah. Yenning Farber, 50-24 lifetime best. Worth being corrected to officially 50-54. So well done to him. That's your men's 400 meters regional race. So there are two regional races. Now we get stuck back into the uh, World Athletic Bronze Tour events, the events which uh, have their prize money on offer as well. 
And uh, let's talk about some of that prize money, because if you were to win 400, 1500 in the pole vault, on the men's side, that's 700 euros for the win, and on the women's side, if you were to win the 60, 1500 on the long jump, that's also 700 euros. And uh, a few of the events offering 400 euros for first place as well. And uh, prize money all the way down to fourth place in most of the events. Well, that's just clarification of those results. In the regional race there, 50-54. But yeah, ain't far but fantastic last 100 meters or so. and. That really is what you need to do indoors. It's uh, attack, attack, attack. If you're fading, I really do feel like you lose all momentum. Well, the men's 400 coming up, they're gonna have three heats. And the way I see it, each heat is almost getting faster. And um, they're basically just gonna take the fastest time. They're not heats. In a, in, as such, like there's no final to come after, so they're not heats in a traditional format, but uh, they are just heats of 400 meter races. And the reason being is because it would be a little unfair to put, uh, you know, people travel all this way for a bronze tour to put them right on the inside. I mean, just look at that turn; it's just lethal um, when you're trying to run, you know, at full speed. And the way I look at it and the way what the heat suggests is actually they get faster and faster. So we'll have the fastest athletes. I mean, well, Pavel Maslak, what about him? Goodness me, Indoor World Champion 2014, 2016 and 2018. Indoor European Champion 2023, 2017 and 2015. He'll go in that final heat. Um, but uh, in this one, Lucas Sudkus, Felix Jan, Florian Kroll and uh, Rocco Martin. So... Man from Lithuania, can he upset the Germans? Can he beat them on home soil? Martin, 48.07, personal best. Kroll, 48.15, so very, very close. Mm, Jan Felix as well, 48.49. But uh, the Lithuanian is the fastest. Just familiarize ourselves with these athletes a little bit easier. Not all wearing red vests. So there we are, Rocco Martin on the outside. It really is apparent, isn't it, in the 400 indoors when they break, when you're on the outside, because you get such a kind of speed injection when you come off those banks and you cut across the rest of the field. You always seem to find yourself at the front of the field. For some people, that's a good thing. They can stretch out. For others, they're there to be shot at. Florian Kroll. 48.15 Lifetime best, that's indoors Acknowledging the crowd, fantastic crowd here We expect to see 2,000 or so spectators fill this uh, arena And it is getting back to uh, an established meeting that we saw Back in the 90s, early 2000s, we saw uh, well, an indoor world record, didn't we, from Yuri Borzikowski over the 800, under 20 record, though. Um, but we've got some Olympic and world champions on show today. Maliki Mahambo in the long jump. We'll let you know when that starts. We'll be following very, very closely. What a superstar she's been. So, Sukis, Jan, Kral, and Martin in that order. To Youngfield. Sukis and Kral, just 19 years of age. <coughs> Whoa, there was definitely an echo. Definitely an echo in the, in the facility, in the arena. That's what I heard, though. That 
but his time was just a bit off. You're just, just easy to fall out the blocks. And this is one thing the athletes probably don't appreciate. I mean, you can do all the training in the world, but uh, in training, you haven't got the nerves. You haven't got the anticipation that you have on event day. And that's going to be horrible if he's disqualified. Well, they are having to follow the World Athletics rules, aren't they? It's a bronze indoor tour. Uh, there's nothing you can do about it. So, well, there goes Martin. Poor Rocco Martin. And I think the other men in this race will actually be licking their lips at that, licking their chops, because it just makes it easier for them. I mean, 400 in lanes the whole way outdoors. They're not used to kind of fighting, battling, overtaking. And that's why it's always an interesting dynamic indoors, isn't it? Because when you're trying to run full speed and overtake and maybe adjust your adjust your stride, adjust your rhythm, very, very technical. And with just three of them, there's obviously less bodies that you have to be wary of. So where we go, Sukis, Jan and Kroll in that order. Kroll dead centre on the outside sorry Jan Felix Jan is straight up on his shoulder but watch this as they come off the bank maybe a steadier start from Kroll on the outside Felix Jan in the middle there and Lucas Sukas in the blue he's going to fight to get that inside is Sukas he's not going to get there or is he yes he is he's going to hold it now this is where you'll sometimes see athletes relax this is where tactics comes into it in this forge mid indoor race but Lucas Sukas well he's the fastest on paper he's continuing to pile it on but hey Felix Jan right behind him. Can he catapult on the home straight? Can he close but down Sukis? He's not going to get there, is he? Lucas Sukis, the Lithuanian, storms it here in Dortmund. 47.80. Well, let's see what the official time is. It may well be corrected. We saw it previously corrected in that previous heat. But, uh, well, well done to him. Tactical masterclass. Hit the inside. Had to hold them off. 47.64. There you go. Kroll, 48-17, and uh, Felix Jan equal season's best, 49-07. Of course, Martin, Rocco Martin there, DQ'd, unfortunately. It was very unfortunate as well. It wasn't even an anticipation of the start. It just looked like he got a bit nervous and, and almost fell out the blocks. It's uh, pretty steep up and up in lane six. Well, that looks like Robert Farkin. I've just seen stride across our screen. And quite strange because he's due to be running the 800 I thought we had a few more 400 meter heats but uh, the other two heats will come a little bit later in the day 528 and 535 so actually your next event will be will be the men's 800 so we've seen the, uh, the, the regional 400 go down and heat one of the international 400 So we will move on to this men's 800 once we just clarify those results from heat one there. Lucas Sukis, 47.64. Florian Kroll, 48.17. And Felix Jan, 49.07. Great racing for all. Great running from the Lithuanian. Well, that's a two-lap dash over. And over to this men's 800. Well, it got put on last minute, this event. Yoshi Muller, the event organizer, prepared the stage once Robert Farkin got in touch, one of Germany's best 800 meter runners right now, and he said, look, I'm training well, I think I need an 800, it wasn't in the plan, what can you do for me? And um, Yoshi Muller said, no problem at all. So he's got this field together, very, very last minute, good field indeed. We've got Mustafa Smiley, who's a uh, Moroccan 144, 800 meter runner outdoors, 338, 1500 meter man sixth at the world indoor championships as well but he doesn't look to be on that start line does smiley so a late change to that confirmed start scooping alpha Van Bruegel Lewis Overbeck 
As well, and Robert Farkin. So Farkin struggled with COVID. Five times German champion, struggled with injury as well. He's back. Oh, there's Lewis Bushbeck. It's a little bit out of his depth with this man in the field. Indoor personal best, 147, 14. Well, what can he do here? This is a bit of speed. This is the test him. Interestingly, he's gone to open with an 800. That would suggest he wants to sharpen his tools for the 1500 and that might be his target for the World Indoor Championships. Well, we'll find out over the next few months. Lewis Oberbeck here, 148.3, lifetime best. That's indoors. He was in fact the German champion outdoors, ladies and gentlemen. It's a very, very tactical 147. That was in 2023. Ram Bugel, Dutch champion there, 146.98. He's going to enjoy this. Pressure's off him. Can he compete? Can he get amongst it? Can he cause a little bit of an upset? And uh, Malik Scoopy and Alpha there. What a name. 150 lifetime best. So, these gentlemen will kickstart their 2024 campaign. So, Bugle, Barkin, Oberbeck, Scoopy and Alpha, and Bushbeck. And I'll be interested to see as they get away if Farkin has a pacemaker at all. If Bushbeck on the outside is Farkin's pacer. Well, we'll find out. I don't think so. I'm not sure if that is the case. However, it looks like it might be because Farkin slotted straight in behind him. And on paper, Bushbeck is nowhere near the man Farkin is. You wouldn't expect him to be out front like that. So it looks like Bushbeck will pace him. Let's see what Farkin goes through this 200 meter split in 25.5. And he looks smooth, doesn't he? Well, he's worked on his strength over the last few years. That 332.1 shocked German athletics. And 1500 meter running in 2023 went through the roof, 332. And um, that's why the questions are now being asked, is he a better 1500 meter man than an 800 meter runner? So he could be using this to sharpen his tools for his indoor campaign. We know 1500 indoors is very competitive. You need the speed, you need the change of pace. That's all things the 800 is gonna give you. Good running, 52 mids through 400. That's setting him up for a nice, Fast time here, world sub 150, maybe even sub personal best territory of 147. Let's see if he can hold on. How's the winter miles been paying off? Farkin, so he's out front at the moment. You know what? This has been a near perfect race for this man so far. He's had nothing get his way. Bushbeck kindly drifted to it outside the face of 118.98, 26.7. So just slowing a little bit, but can he just buffer that lactic? Can he hold on? This is all about coping with the pain over the last few meters or so. He's gonna come under challenge here. I think it's Oberbeck, isn't it? Who's gonna challenge him in the final 50 meters or so. But Robert Farkin, is it ever in doubt? Can he hold on? Well, this will be unknown territory for him this early in 2024. 147.1, not a bad effort at all. And the meet just outside that meet record. Well, he's a world lead. So the German fans can get excited about that. And um, oh, let's see what that official time comes out because he may well have walked away with a meat record. Robert Farkin, ladies and gentlemen. Fantastic run, got put on last minute. It wasn't part of his program. 147.00, meat record for Farkin. He has not disappointed and a world lead. He'll take that. He's happy, he's healthy, and he's having fun in 2024. <laughs> Wow, he's a German national champion and he's slowly becoming a superstar. He's going to look to compete on the European stage. Can't wait to see how his indoor season evolves. And uh, representing that on Athletic Group, that OAC group is a real serious bunch. They don't leave a stone unturned in their preparations. Very scientific approach as well. Seems to be the way things are going. All thanks to Jakob Ingebrigtsen, of course. So there we are then. Farkin, 147.00, medium record. Oberbeck, 147.61, personal best. Malik Skupin Alpha, 147.61, personal best as well. Awfully tight on the line between those two. Bugle, the Dutch champion, fading back to fourth. 150.67. And I'm not sure if he'll be too happy with that. 
Rapid Sydney, he's a 146 man. He's quite a way off his lifetime best. Well, if you are just joining us, this is the Spark Ace and Indoor meeting in Dortmund. It's a World Athletics Continental Tour bronze labelled event. And we have just witnessed Robert Farkin set a meet record in the 800, 147.00, and a world lead. However, we're going to see a lot of world lead signs. It always makes me chuckle. We're going to see a lot of world lead signs over the next month or two as athletes toe the line for the first time in 2024 some of the big names obviously yet to compete next up on the track we're going to have the 60 meter heats for the women Well, here we go then. Spark A's an indoor meeting in Dortmund. You just saw a little recap of what happened in 2023. And the lights have been dimmed. The mood is being set for this men's pole vault, which is coming up in just a moment's time. World champion Raphael Holdstep. Well, he won that world championship title 2013. 30 Olympic Games in 2012. Second in the world championships in 2015 and sixth in 2019 he is a legend of the pole vault here in germany we've got an extremely talented feel can we hit that six meter mark many of these men operating around about that 580 590 range 
young and old to look forward to in this men's pole vault. And look at this then, the atmosphere that we can expect here in Dortmund as we're going to see these introductions. And I believe that's a sign. That may be from last year. We're just seeing a little bit of a recap. From last year, well, she's an extremely talented long jumper, is a son, and she's one who is going to be pushing Malika Mahambo the whole way, the whole nine yards, as they say, in this long jump competition. I'm really, really looking forward to that. That's the count a little bit down the line. And, uh, well, Asani, she was uh, bronze in a European under 20 championships in 2021, 670, her lifetime best. She didn't improve on that from last year. So while we're watching these recaps of previous years, I mean, this is Amal Tuka, 142.50, his lifetime best. His, uh, well, he set a meet record here last year, and uh, Robert Farkin has gone and bettered that in 2024, albeit by three hundredths of a second or so. Beautifully close, wasn't it? The uni on the outside. Well, it's a nice recap of last year's 1500. We've got some good talent. Reve Walcott, Nolan, and Georgia Bell to come in the 1500 later today. Can they get near that meet record? We've already seen one meet record go with Farkin in the 800. The meet record of four minutes mid. That men's pole competition last year was truly something. They were really squeezing it, going toe to toe. So good to see such strong competition this early in an athletics campaign. Torben Black, the German. European standard, that's why he was so delighted. 5.82. Those wide athletic standards are something that uh, we will talk about as the afternoon goes on, that's for sure. So a slight pause in the program. We're really waiting until well four o'clock. We're due to see the pole vault men's competition get underway, and uh, so that's what we're looking for next. Then we've got the 60 meter women's heats, the 60 meter hurdles men final. Feel free to go back and uh, watch those heats. They happened over the very first event when we came on air. Long jump women's final. Well, I mentioned Maliki Mahambo. She really is the star name at this competition. 800 meter women's coming up later, 60 meter men's final, and that 1500 final on the men's side to crown off the afternoon, or shall I say, evening by that point. And the crowd have really started to fill this arena, haven't they? I think we can safely say almost 2,000 people have crammed in. Nice balcony over on the far side. Absolutely awesome facility here in Dortmund. Becoming well known. And a competition which uh, was very famous in the late 90s, early 2000s has come, has revived itself and uh, I think started back up 2018. So it hasn't been going too many years because you, you, you count, what, two years lost to COVID or just the one year lost to COVID. 
and um, so he had a short pause there but uh, it's slowly building itself back up and being known for a great atmosphere I mean Germans in general um, love their athletics they're always passionate fans they're knowledgeable fans and what's more is they know how to put on a show and they're very very loud I mean the past few for me the best European championships I've watched have been Munich in 2022 which is fantastic it was out of this world um, the stadium of course out of this world but then you know before that Berlin in 2018 was was truly special as well so they put on some great events over the last few years have the Germans when it comes to athletics and I think if you speak to a lot of athletes in this current age and say what was your favourite European Championships they will probably look to either Berlin or Munich but uh, Rome promises to be special certainly a special location and when you look at the Diamond League circuit and the events they host in Rome they're always very very fast the weather conditions just so conducive and you know I think what the European Championships are going to be in early June get started on the 7th of June and that is uh, optimal weather conditions um, yes it's starting to get warm but it's not athletes need a bit of warmth but not too hot like the soaring soaring temperatures we saw in Budapest this year I think for some of the distance events they really struggled but uh, at four o'clock, so what, in three, four minutes time, this men's pole vault competition is going to get underway. I briefly mentioned world champion, former world champion, Raphael Holstep. He really is the man that the crowd have probably come in to see. Watch out for Lil Fosto, the Norwegian. Now, nah, he's an interesting subject. Just 23 years of age, which in pole vault terms is relatively young. It is an event that you tend to mature just because it's so technical. You mature a little bit later on. But uh, Lil Foss, he's got he's the highest world ranking in the field, 15th in the world, because he was third at the European Championships as an under 23 this year, but seventh at the European Indoor Championships in 2023. Can he go one better in the World Champs? Can he get a top six, top five finish in the World Indoors in Glasgow? It's probably going to be his aim, no doubt. He's going to have to keep that in mind. And when we're looking at, uh, at Glasgow, the World Indoor Championships, we have to look at those standards. And uh, for the pole vault, 590. Now, the only man in the field who has done that is uh, Urzu Sazma of Turkey, five times Turkish champ, who's eighth in that World Championships in 2022. And uh, quickly due to line up in this competition, he's made the, made the trip over. Firm. He is on the entry system. He has been registered. And uh, there is your men's pole vault then. Carmen Muller, Human, Kachenko, Popola, Sakma, that's the man I was just mentioning. Lil Foss as well. Kadalis, look out for him. like they are going to introduce these men give them the introductions they deserve here they come Angelic Holman well we're starting to see it it's a feature more and more isn't it in athletics the dimmed lights the introductions and you know what I love it I hope you do at home it really highlights these athletes we get to know them we familiarize ourselves with them otherwise especially in these field events they sort of you know sneak onto the track if you like and um we tend to forget they're even there sometimes but uh hendrik muller out he comes as well and athletes will relish this they really will this will uh well for some, they'll thrive in it. For others, they'll just wish, you know, they could get on and compete and go about their business without too much fuss, too much bother. Tom Human in 5.51 personal best. Season's best of 5.20, so he's out. He's been competing already. And uh, often often you'll find that for events as they, they can compete as long as they've got access to an indoor facility this time of year. Klevchenko, 5 minutes 40, that's a season's best, so he's in good form. It's rare you see someone this early in the season actually setting personal bests. 
Look at a man from Ukraine do. Coppola from the Netherlands. Just turned 31. Comes with his blue Viking hairstyle. Very similar to, to Adam Tamperi, actually. But oh, look at this man. Rafael holds up world champion in 2013 over in Moscow. He's still going strong. Olympic bronze medalist in 2012. He was a German icon in this event for many, many years. We know Germans are particularly good at the field events as well they take it very seriously they love the technical aspects of athletics i mentioned their fans are knowledgeable torben blecht in 586 personal best out he comes giving the old mascot Good old high five, giving each other a high five before they compete as well. Always friends, this sort of You kind of have to be. So you, it's an interesting dynamic. Oleg Zernikov, 581 lifetime best. It's a very interesting dynamic. They're sort of there, milling around. They have to sit next to each other, share the same bench, and then moments later, get up and compete for their life and look to uh, to beat their opponents. You can often for sure there's some psyching out which goes on. There we are, Ozu Salzmadin. 590, the man to watch. The Turk, five times Turk, Turkish champion, eighth of the world championship 2022 over in Eugene. And if I'm right, this will be Hagen Lil Foss. 15th in the world right now, seventh at the European indoors last year. Only bronze at the European under 23 championships in 2023, but how can he develop into a senior? And finally then, Kalalis of Greece, full of energy, you'd hope, this early in 2024. They're getting their season started. And he comes super relaxed. Well, this could be, like I said, the dynamic, psyching a few of them out, high five. So a massive field in this men's pole vault. Expect this to last the length of the program that we are on air for. It'd be interesting to see what these men come in at, actually. 590, that world championship standard. That's what I think a lot of them will be will be looking at as well, if I'm honest. Well, next on the track, though, these women's 60 meter heats. Tabati, Neu, Burkhart, Van Look out for Lisa Medi, Quanay, the German. Quavi. Very, very strong. The two heats, qualification exactly the same as the men. First two, four fastest losers. There you are. Party from Lebanon, 747. Lifetime best. Denier, Belgium, 745, lifetime best, very, very strong. Well, she'll have to operate probably in lifetime best territory to qualify. Spanudaki, Hatsariga, 723, she's one to watch, really. Three times Balkan champion. Well, Bech, Rumenanchuk, 745, personal best. Well, Burkhardt, she's the one that uh, people will be here looking forward to watching. Always a member of that German 4x1 quartet, isn't she? European champion in 2022 over the 4x1, 1101 her lifetime best over the 100. If she's in form, expect her to be at the head of this field. Leonie Van Vliet. Well, Quave, 1119 meter personal best. Strong sprinter in her time. What can she do here? Qualification. 
And to complete the lineup, Christine Adikanova. So Alexandra Burkhart goes in five. On the inside of here, her Marina Beck with Amanchuk. The Ukrainian. As they await those starters orders. Oh, Away they go there. Nice clean start from all. And can Alexandra Burkhardt come through? It's tight on the inside, but she's going to edge it. Kwai on the outside as well. Looks like she came through for second. Burkhardt, strong run. Perhaps a hesitant start. You'd expect that this time of year. But she'll qualify for that final. That's all she's going to want from that heat. That's all you can want from a heat. 7.30, so not slow at all. Kwai, 7.36, that's the season's best for her. She was a three-time German champion. Bit of a relay specialist as well. A lot of these Germans, they really do focus on the relay. That's where they pick up medals at major championships. European champions, of course, in 2022. On home soil, what a, what a kind of moment that was, wasn't it, to celebrate that Munich championships. Freddy Carnova, 7.43, lifetime best. And look all the way down to 6, because 7.50 there is going to be your fastest loser spot at the moment. So how many people can we get inside? How many women can get inside that mark if they want to automatically qualify for that 60-meter final? Coming up a little bit later this afternoon, I will tell you when that is going to be. It's around about 5 past 5, that women's 60 final. Men's pole vault. About to get going. Then. Of course, pole vaulters don't wear their name or number on that front side. That is what they go over the bar. Next heat of that women's 60 is going to feature. Florian Bazalu of Portugal, 22-time Portuguese champion. Fantastic talent, 40 years old. More on her to come. I believe it's Hendrik Holman who's going to get this pole competition started. This looks like Hendrik Muller. Hendrik Coleman, sorry. Going to have another go at 480. I think he is the only one who is going to try to go clear at 480. Everyone else is going to enter the competition at a, at a high height. Oh, just goes clear. That'll do, though. You can build nicely into this competition. I mean, in the, in the women's competition, some of the, uh, you know, the favourite... Saved herself to uh, to enter the competition at a late date, four meters twenty. Didn't even go clear. So always nice to get a mark on the board for Homan. Okay, he tuned in. Vupo, Preppens, Wildenberg, Stefanich, Zalu. 40 years old, can you believe it? I mean, we saw last weekend, 90 year old, break 60 seconds for the 290 and still sprinting. You can, you can call 60 seconds or 55 seconds for 200 sprinting, but at 90, I think it's warranted. Well, Marvin at Vupol then. Lady Pleppins, 7.30. Well, she's just got to replicate that sort of time and she'll be in the final. 7.50 is that qualifying mark. The fastest loser spot, the last one. Then Wurdenberg, 7.25 again. 
season's best of 7.38, so she's shown she is in form to qualify for that final and have a second run, a second crack at the whip, if you like. Magdalena Stefanovic. Stefanovic. Well, she certainly wants to watch this, Stefanovic. Second at those European Championships for Poland in the 4x1 relay specialist as well. Lorin Bazalu, 717 lifetime best, 724 seasons best. So still at the top of her game. What is her secret? National record holder over the 100 for Portugal as well. Takac, 740. This is, you would think, the faster on paper. Certainly the faster heat of the two. The data, the fastest in the field. Interestingly, not the fastest over the 100 though, but electric over that 60 meters, 712, her lifetime best. She's a 4x200 national champion, so she tried to fit her spot for that World Indoor Championship. I mean, for the women, 719 is the qualification standard for the World Indoors. Obviously, you can qualify by ranking points as well. And in the 60 meters, I believe they allow something outrageous like 56 athletes. So, whereas the other events indoors are limited to 30, some are even just limited to top 15 in the world. More on that later as these women settle into their blocks. But it, Taylor, Goldenberg, Magdalena. Bazali, Takac, Ledera, and Sabati. So away they go, then eyes on Bazalu, the 40 year old in the middle. But Ledera is looking confident. Oh, who take it? Was it Bazalu, the Portuguese athlete, the Portuguese national record holder? And Ledera just looked up. I think she may have eased off, to be honest. I think she knew she was clear. Let's have a look. Stefanovic, it was. Stefanovic. 726 equal personal best. We'll take that. Bazalu in second. And Takac in third. Well, Ledera, that's a surprise. All the way down in seventh. And that's a result we did not expect. So there's your final. Stefanovic, Mazalu, Takac, Burkhardt, Kwai, Rudenberg, Udukanov, and Hitsaliga down there. 7.43 qualified you in the end. And all of those pretty much coming from that last heat, I believe, looking at, looking at the results of that last heat and comparing them to heat one. It's 7.26. So these women are in good form. 7.19, that world championship standard for Glasgow in a couple months time they'll have one eye on that and there you are the athletes who did not make it out out of their heat that wraps up those 60 meter heats five minutes time we're going to have the men's 60 meter hurdle final Retune back into that one. So, Hendrik Homer going to try five meters and five. This is early days in the men's pod, but I expect to see a few athletes come in around about that 520, 530 mark and uh, build towards the 580 and even the 590. That's where we want to see the victory. Can we get close to six meters? Six meters is still that meter record, by the way. Danny Eckers, six meter pole vault, it's a German record as well, and that still stands today. So can we see a German get up near that mark? So, Hyman. 505, he's got the crowd all to himself at this stage in the competition. They're loving it. Oh, bows out. So 
So, failure at 5.05, he'll have two more attempts, and he'll be able to do those in his own time as well, seeing as, well, we might see a few others join in shortly. I think they would want to be on the safer, safer side. All those hurdles getting set up for these men. So close though. Ever so close from Muller who will just seek a little bit of advice from his coach. Hendrik Muller comes into the competition now as well, so welcome Hendrik. Look at those crowds. How many sports do you get to get up close and personal with the athletes like you do in athletics? They're so humble as well, they're they're very easy to reach. They're very easy to chat to, they're always open. Oh, Kravchenko also going to enter the competition of five meters in five centimeters. Can he go clear? You'd expect so. Easy. Oh, he made light work of that, didn't he? The Ukrainian world the season's best and a lifetime best of 540. He's in form at the moment and he's just showing it. Nice kind of warm-up height for him. Let's return our attention to this men's 60 meter final. And here we go, Sevla Morty. Now you hurt. Gerds looked very, very good in the heat, didn't he? So did our you hard. There were two heat winners. Oh, Dallas, lack up as well, very strong, equal with uh, Gerds. So, McDag Sevler made it through, just sneaky into this final. Manuel Morty, strong run from him as well, qualified as a fastest loser. Or should I say time qualification? I think that's how they have adjusted it, just like they've changed the name. It's not indoor competitions anymore. It should be known as the short track competition. So, Yakubo Yohardin, the man from Q8, Asian game champion, four times national champion, 110 meter hurdle national champion, or national record holder for Q8 as well. I say he's an established hurdler. He'll be familiar to this world tour, this scene. Job Gerd's in 770. Look very, very smooth, relaxed in his heat. As the heat went up, getting fired up. Teles 777. So he's going to need to just improve on that if he's going to feature in this final. Have Suspicion a few of these men will get ever so close to that world and go qualifying mark of 762. They're very close to it already, just 800 to a second or so off. Like this man, Elmo Laka. Nine times indoor and outdoor champion in the hurdles. He's a national record holder as well. Here's Laka. Well, Peden. No Laka World. Countryman and Eichmann to complete your lineup right on the outside. 787. Can he get amongst it? Can he get a good start? A clean run. He's probably going to have to focus on his own race a little bit. He's getting the crowd G'd up though because he's on home soil. He's going to need them if he's going to compete with these eight men. So we have Silva, Morty, Ayuha, Gerds, Seles, Laka, Haydn, and Eichmann. Here we go. Athletes take to their mark. Look how they all have a slightly different approach. 
just take a slightly different routine, rituals, into the blocks. Many of them will replicate that routine every single race they do. Puts them in a state of mind, ready to compete, not just physically, but mentally as well. So away they go then, watch out for those middle lanes. Al Juhar's rose very, very well. He's going to come through for the win, or is he? Can Gertz pull him back on the line? No, he can't. 770 is it? Let's wait for the official clocking. They're going to be ever so close to that world indoor qualifying mark. But Al Juhar, the man from Q8, he was perhaps the favourite on paper. I think Job Gertz will be a little bit disappointed. He couldn't quite compete. He couldn't get near him, could he? Look at that, 7.58 officially. Meets a record here in Dortmund. We've seen one already. That's two. We're being spoilt here at the moment. Job Gerds as well. Lifetime best for him, 7.63. And you know what? That's booked his place for the World Indoor Championships in Glasgow as well. So he's going to be delighted. Well, he's inside that qualifying mark. Presume he would want to go. Wow, Al Yohar. Electric out the blocks and just continued. No wonder Gerds couldn't get back onto it. Morty settles for third, 770. Lacker, man, Finland, 771 in fourth. Perhaps a little bit disappointed. Oh, I'm a Lacker B after his heat. Probably wanted to get amongst it a little bit more. But look at this, Aoyoha. He's up tall straight away, isn't he? Aggressive into that first hurdle. Leading with his left. And just has it on the lean as well as Gerds trying to get back onto him. And to be honest, Gerds didn't do much wrong. He ran a lifetime best. He won't complain. He didn't do much wrong at all. But he just couldn't get onto our Yoha. And I think in the hurdles, if you have that gap, it is very hard to close as long as you get a smooth run. So Yakib Al Yoha, 7.58, meeting record. Good, 763. And Manuel Morty in third. Elmo Lacker. Like I said, perhaps a bit disappointed with that fourth place. Although it's early season. Tim Eichemann in fifth as well. So here's Hendrik Homan. Can he go clear of 505 or it's quite a short competition? Mind you, big jump. 25 centimeters from 480 to 505, and he didn't clear 480 first time either. So, what can he do? Crowder behind him, though. Come on, Homan. Ah, just not to be today. For Hendrik Homan, unfortunately. Out he goes. So he's the first one to exit this men's bubble competition and uh, he's exiting before the big guns really have even come in. Lil Foss, Hold Zeppa, Sesma. Greek as well, Karalis to, to come into the competition. So that's unfortunate, but perhaps he can sort of sit down take it in, learn a thing or two against his competitors because he is in the company of some fantastic pole vaulters. I mean, to be in the same competition as a world champion and Olympic medalist, you're almost going to be a little bit starstruck, aren't you? Hendrik Mullen in 505, what can he do? Oh, comfortably, I was a little bit nervous for him. Because this was his entry height, but he's gone clear and he would have known he could do it. Hence why it was his entry height. So good job for Muller. And now he can really, I feel like once you clear that first height in the pole vault, you can really build, you can really get into your, get into the competition a little bit, can't you? So next on the track, it's the women's 400. We've got two heats in similar fashion to that men's 400, um, how it's split into heats. I believe we'll have a slow section, then a fast section. Some big, big names. Yeah. 
Vorbereitung der Frauen, da sind die Vorbereitungen nahezu abgeschlossen. Die 400 Meter der Frauen sind zwei Zeitläufe, stehen dann gegen auf dem Programm der Frauen, das auf die 60 Meter Vorläufe der Männer ab 16 Uhr. So, Kravchenko also went clear at 505 in that pole vault, just like Hank, we just witnessed Hendrik Müller go clear. So as they sit down, take a little break, assess, and plan their next jump. They know what they need to do on that next height. We can preview this women's 400. Heat one's going to feature MK Burbe, Anna McCarthyla, Alice Magnon, Phil Healy of Ireland. Look out for her, Katia Azevedo. Short, just to kind of help with their grip a little bit, as you know, you need to grip that pole as much as possible through the plant phase, cling to it. It is a highly athletic sport, very, very technical. Also, you need a certain amount of courage to even attempt it. The gymnastic element as well that these men and women will see. We saw earlier will have arch themselves and bend over. So if you are just joining us, good afternoon and welcome to this Dortmund Indoor Grand Prix. What at this bronze label event. Some good prize money on offer, some good world ranking points. And perhaps actually it's a good time to talk about those world ranking points because effectively you get more points. Well, the points you get for, for a competition or you know a, a time or height or distance is ranking method is such you get a result score plus your placing score so where you come in that event equals your performance score and pretty much the highest. Be sure the highest result score you can get is around about 1400 points but uh, to put that into context you'd have to run way above a world record to achieve such marks so Hendrik Muller then, 520. What can he do? There's a good clearance of five meters and five centimeters. Oh, nowhere near. Nowhere near. And this is where a bit of fatigue probably starting to creep in, complacency. But uh, just being in that competition environment, that's something that uh, pole vaulters would have missed through the last few months since that summer campaign. So Muller will consult the coach as we turn our attention to the track, back to the track. Well, MK Verve on the inside. Morgan Thaler in lane three. Alice Magnon as well in four. Phil Healy and Katia Azevedo. Azevedo, by the way, on the outside, Mediterranean Games champion in 2022, 51-24 is her lifetime best outdoors. However, indoors, just 52-90. So we'll wait, these, wait for these women to be introduced. This heat one or two. In fact, we've got some of the faster runners in this heat. So, before the event, I tried to uh, make an assumption and I just presumed that heat one 
was perhaps the, the faster of the two in heat, uh, the slower of the two, sorry, in heat two would be the fastest, but uh, I think this heat might be slightly quicker, or they might be evenly split. Let's see, let's let's find out. That's why you're here, that's why you're tuning in. There's Azevedo, the Mediterranean Games champion, Portuguese athlete. Well, there's Phil Healy of Ireland. Huge talent, eight times national champion outdoors, seven times national champion indoors. How about that? Alice Magnon, three times, well, four by four specialist for Italy in the mixed relay and the women's four by four as well. Three times top eight at the World Championships for Italy. Morgan Thaler then being introduced to the crowd, all smiles at this stage. And MK Verve of Belgium to complete the lineup. Actually, have no data on her, so this one would presume it is not her debut over 400, but uh, her stats suggest that. So it may well be her debut. And here she is in the deep end in a World Athletics Continental Tour, albeit a bronze label. Tony outside for me as the Vado is one to watch. Alice Magnon is one to watch of Italy. 51.47 lifetime best outdoors. Phil Healy, 51.50 lifetime best. She's an interesting runner as her lifetime best indoors and out are very, very similar. And not what you'd expect over the 400. So off they go, and then Azevedo on the outside, Healy inside of her, the short, shorter of the two, shall I say, in the black path, Wapnik speeds round that first bend and into the second bend, well this is going to be interesting, this is very, very aggressive from Healy, she's clearly a good indoor runner, as I mentioned, her lifetime best outdoors is just a fraction quicker than her indoor lifetime best. Some athletes can just negotiate the bends a lot easier. They have a slightly shorter, choppier stride, but a higher cadence. That is going to suit an indoor. That is going to suit an athlete who specializes indoors. Healy now being challenged on the outside of her. Well, as a Vedu coming strong as well. And coming through, it's the Italian Magnon who's going to take this one. Magnon wins. Comfortably at the end, 52.90. Let's see what that is official. What the official time comes in at. 52.84 potentially. Well, Alice Magnon. Strong running. Key member of that Italian 4x4 team as well. Azevedo comes through for second and Healy in third. 53.61. So... All athletes over 400, a little way off of perhaps where they want to be and perhaps where they need to be as well. However, with the first race of the season, you probably can't ask for too much more than that. Well, human enters the competition in 520 goes clear equal seasons best still be chuffed with that on he goes on he goes I mean, looking forward to when hold step and uh, as you says my come in there's the uh, women's 400 heat one for you Alice Magnon 5282 no doubt about the winner in the end she uh, made a move on the back straight ease round Healy who was adamant to get to the front early on. Oh, here we go then. Women's long jump final. Oh, Mika Michaela Asani in there. Look at that. Malika Mahambu. Well, they're going to be introduced. Just like that men's pole what was. This really is the, uh, the A-list event, isn't it? This is where the big names are this afternoon. Raquel Muller. to her lifetime best.
Carolina Klein entering the arena for the first time. Well, can anyone challenge Mahambi? That's what we'll be asking ourselves. Yeah, Kipton, four-time Cypriot champ. 68, lifetime best. Making her way over to the runway. Samira Atamaya then. Wow. Home crowd favorite, you could say. Seeing from Olympia Dortmund, just 20, just 19 years of age as well, 621. And she improving there. Homea. Sixty-six lifetime best. Fantastic life features and introductions. They really are. Diana Lesti, then the Hungarian. It's the other high Hungarian, that Anastasia. Anastasia. Yen is what we're looking for. We're looking forward to seeing her. She's the 16-time Hungarian champion. How about that? Some of these athletes have won their national championships for fun over the last few years. And uh, Yen is one of those. Well, Michaela Asani then. This time last year, she said her lifetime best is 6.70. It was a fantastic performance. We were excited to see what she was going to do the rest of the season. She couldn't improve on that mark, believe it or not. But here she is. She knows the arena. And she'll be excited to compete here. Gada Sivic then. Nine-time Serbian champion. Also dominated her national championships over the past few years. Well, Beck Romanchuk. 696 well she's a european champion in the triple jump in 2022 second in that world cup as well in 2023 in the triple jump so triple jumper by trade is roman chuck but what can she do in the long jump always good to see athletes you often see it indoors actually athletes pushing themselves outside their comfort zone trying a similar discipline just improve on a three strengths for their main event Here she is then, she needs no introduction at all, Malika Mihambo, Olympic world and European champion, German female athlete of the year, lifetime best of 7 meters 30, that's outdoors, so ignore that indoor graphic of 707 in the long jump, it doesn't make too much difference, of course outdoors you can have a following wind, which would make a pretty big difference, up to 2 meters a second. If you are familiar with those sprints and jumps events. She won this title in this arena previously. Well, back to the 400 meter women's heat two then. The recent leg lineup to go in this one as we're going to be introduced to the lineup. There we are, Ella Lazanon. PB way back from 2013, believe it or not, the Finnish athlete. Julia Neidberger. In that Swiss 4x4 team is Neidberger. 50, 59, 5187, sorry, her lifetime best. Sophie Becker then. Well, how about her? She's an Olympian and currently works in the tech services at Pfizer. 4x4 mixed relay in Tokyo, finishing eighth there for Ireland. But uh, Eliza Lechliner then. 52.99, lifetime best. And Maya Thelesson, 4.18, lifetime best. Well, don't expect her to feature in this one. And that's no disrespect, that's more of a compliment to how strong this field is. So on the outside of Therese and it's leg liner, Becker, Neidberger, and Azanen on the outside. On your mark.
So as the athletes settle into their blocks. The focus, the concentration to make sure they get out hard and smooth and stay on their feet on those ever so tight banks. So on the outside, Rosanen, Neiderberger and Becker. Becker's gone off very, very fast. Perhaps she took a little bit of inspiration from Phil Healy in that previous heat. On the outside is Neiderberger. So watch out for her as she comes off the bank. Can she compete? So Sophie Becker, the Irish representative at the Tokyo Olympic Games in the 4x4. A lot of these athletes featured in the 4x4 for their various nationalities. Neidbecker in second place. Rosanen in third with Sophie Becker. Science technical expert working at Pfizer at the moment. She's doing a phenomenal job. What a way to kickstart her campaign. Is she going to fade just slightly? Neidberger is going to come back at her on the home straight. Has she got enough? Can she take this title? Neidberger is going to muscle her way through. And Pip Becker on the line. 54-20. Let's see what the official time says. And these 400 runners, I suppose, just just getting into what second or third gear at this stage in the season. Very much a shock to the system, but credit to a lot of them. You know, and I mentioned Becca, she works full time at Pfizer. So this is, you know, not a hobby. It's something she takes very, very seriously, but she's got to be awfully driven in order to train around full time work. And that is something she does. So 54.06. So a lot of those athletes will look to improve quite considerably on those marks over the next few weeks and months if they are to feature at all on the world stage in March. That wraps up the women's 400 in. That was heat two. And next up, we got the men's 60 meter heats before the women's 60 final. But let's have a little look at this then. So, Rosanen couldn't get out very hard. Neidberger there wins it. And Becker in second. Ever so close. But that's what indoors is about, really. You, you just, just honing your craft. Practicing your tactics. I mean, Becca was aggressive. Interesting. That came back to bite her. Perhaps she'll regret that first lap, that first lap, that opening 100 even. But uh, there you are, Julian Neidberger. You can see how close it is 54.03 to 54.09. Just six hundredths of a second separate the two. And the two fins down in fourth and fifth. Lazenant. Who's on the outside. So, Alice Manuan will win the overall. 400 meter title 52.82 very good run Katia Azevedo as well in second so those in that second heat in fact the second heat was the slower of the two so heat one much much faster indeed well we'll look ahead to these men's 60 meter heats not before we see Coppola Look to open up his Povol campaign here in Dortmund. Oh, I was about to say he was going to go easily clear, but just clips it on the way down, doesn't he? On top of it, height-wise, had 5.35 well in the bank. So you'd expect that from, from the Dutchman, to be honest. Five eighty two lifetime best, experienced competitor. 31 years of age now. He's the man they'll be looking forward to see. Rafael Holtstep. World champion back in 2013. Olympic bronze medalist in 2012. That was when he was young and up and coming and announcing himself on the world stage. He's a little bit older now. 10 years on from his world championship title, but still competing fiercely. Holtstep on the runway. He showed his kids how it's done. He showed his challengers if they can learn a thing or two off this former world champion. Just goes clear at 5.35. Well, it sees him into the competition with a first time clearance. He won't mind that. Something he can build off as well. 
throughout the rest of the afternoon. And there you are, past the 5.20, goes clear at 5.35, ignore the graphic there. This men's pole vault firing along, looking forward to when those heights get up to the 550, 560 range. I think that's where we're going to have, we're going to see a few, a few potentially crack under pressure. Oh, great clearance there, so more go clear at 535. Torben Black just entering the competition now. Nice, well drilled, smooth jump from him. Smooth vault, shall I say, well clear on the height. Often it's the height which is the easier of the two. It's actually getting the distance, enough distance to go over the bar and back down the other side. So let's look at heat one then, shall we? This men's 60 meters. Very, that graphic was very quick on your screen. Oh, so we flash back to Pobo then. Zernical. Well, German champion in 2021. Fifth in the World Cup event in 2022 was a cool lifetime best of 5.81. So, and the thing is with that 5.80 volt, if you can actually hit that consistency, consistency, you actually find yourself right up there at major championships more often than not. And the Zenical goes clear, but uh, of course, when that's your lifetime best, it's very hard to hit that mark consistently. But uh, I believe it was hold step. When he won that world championship and even when he got his medal in 2012, his, uh, in his lifetime best is only 588. I think right around that mark or even 583 when he actually medaled at these uh, world championships. So you know, sometimes the pressure doesn't get to these men when they're out there vaulting. Well, Katario Osterwald of the Netherlands, 675, lifetime best. Here's uh, Ward Merkic, 60, 666, the man from Belgium. Hendrik Larsen then. Boy, we're looking forward to seeing what this man can do. 6.53. Under 23 gold medalist once upon a time as well. 10 times national champion is last year, but bronze, most importantly bronze at last year's European Indoor Championships. Well, Samuel Kikarelli then. 6.47. Perhaps the man to beat the reigning European Indoor Champion Kikarelli. So the big names side by side, Larsen and Kikarelli. Askovic, what can he do? The German 656. Well, on his day, he can compete with them two men, those two men to his left. Marvin Scott. Key runner in that German 4x1. Team as well, and he actually won. 23 European champion in 2019. You can go off victories in those age group championships too much. A lot of these men have experienced success at an under 20 and an under 23 age. But of course, when you get when you move up into that senior category, it's every man for himself. And the, the strength and depth in, in the events like the 60, the 100, the 200. It's just enormous. You know, but 56 men can qualify for that World Championships indoors in Glasgow in what, six, seven weeks' time. So look out, there we are, man in blue, Larson. You've got to watch out for him, Kikarelli. And Askovic next to him. Scoop on his outside. So it's lanes three, four, and five that we'll be focusing on in particular. However, Osterdold. On the inside, potentially an outside chance of qualifying for this final. Look, it's first two and four fastest losers. Eight men line up in this heat one. So if you're good enough, you're going to get a couple run out, run outs here today in Dortmund.
It's all about the start in this 60 meters, as you expect. Look at Kikarelli go, the European indoor champion. Oh, he's going to get pipped on the line. Goodness me, that was close. It looked as though it's Askovic of Germany on home soil. I was about to go and call it as Kikarelli looked to be in the lead with what, even five meters to go or so. But Larsen and Askovic just kind of came up on his outside, swamped him either side to the European champion, just tying up. A little bit there towards the end. It's only a heat. He won't stress too much. And you presume he'll qualify by time. Let's try and get those results to you. As the, uh, the women's long jump competition is getting underway. Got a savage then. Oh, that's a big old jump. Well, it's well over 650. So if that is... Uh, is legal. Didn't see if there was a red flag. It all happened rather fast. I would expect a foul on the board. She seems pretty relaxed. And uh, so. But for the nine time Serbian champion, lifetime best is 690. She looked to be quite close to it. And potentially showing. You'd expect to see her show a little bit more emotion. So one would presume a foul for that jump. Well, Beck put a man chucked in. The Ukrainian. Triple jumper by trade. European champion in 2022 in Munich. Oh, that's a nice solid jump. Good height to it. Very, very good height. And... I think she's looking on the board and in fact ooh, just a foul just a foul of course the boards have gone it's uh, it's been quite controversial in the long jump because a lot of the boards have gone electrical so they've uh, they've gone away with the, the old fashioned plasticine so don't even need to, to eye the board up but here she is there Malika Mahambo, the crowd know who they are witnessing, who they are watching right now. The Olympic champion, world champion, European champion. She's done it all in this sport. And at this level, at her level, you really do have to dig deep and ask yourself, what is it you still want out of this sport? Do you want to go on? And that often you know, defines the good from the great, from the history makers. They have a hunger, a desire to continue even when they are on top of the mountain. But that's a big foul from Mahambo. She'll uh, look to correct things, go back and uh, get a mark on the board on her second, third, fourth attempt even. She won't be too fast as she opens up her campaign. Well, there's the results then from uh, the men's 60 and it was Askovic who pulled through Kukurelli or oh, Chicharelli shall I say that European indoor champion 669 so just edges out Larson and Askovic neck and neck you'd expect him to qualify but on time but uh, let's keep an eye then 669 is the uh, time on paper so uh, women's long jump final these are the marks on the board at the moment Turn the count. Asani, 671. Well, she PB'd at this competition last year and jumped 670. She's gone one centimeter further today and she tops the table so far in round one. Obviously, a few athletes such as uh, Romanchuk and Mahambu and uh, even Garda Savic of Serbia did foul out on their first attempt. So back to Carolina Klein. Already got a PB of 619. Can she push on from that? Well, footage making it quite difficult to see if it is a white flag or a red flag. There we are then. Kolek, Anuha, OJ, Ediburun. Well, Ediburun, 4x1 Commonwealth Games gold medalist in 2022. That was on home soil. And the seventh of the European indoors in Glasgow back in 2019. It's coming back into form. 
Hendrik Muller, unfortunately, bows out this competition at 5.35. He did well to clear 5.20. So then, Nicholas Skodek, 6.96 lifetime best, 7.12 seasons best, perhaps. Has a slight advantage over a few of these men. The fact he's already been out on the track this season. He's gone through the uh, start process. He's kind of blown off the cobwebs, as it were. She did out in Uha then. 6.71 personal best for him. There he is, the man I was just talking about. 6.56 lifetime best. He's shown he can compete with the best in the world, best in Europe, over the 60 meters. Oh, Joshua Hartman, well, what can we say about him? 200 meter national record holder, 20.02. He ran celebrating this year, second at those European Championships in 2022. So 200 meter runner by trade. This is where he'll, you know, work on his start, work on his top speed, 6.00. 53 is lifetime best over the 60. It's going to be an interesting matchup between him and OJ Edinburgh next to him, the Brit. Got his Van Gould in, 658 lifetime best as well. Van Gould third at the European Indoors in 2019. That's where Edinburgh was seventh. So those two will know each other well. Can he get back to Glasgow, Van Gould? Well, Flemenich. Strong competitor. This uh, looking at this heat on paper. I know we can't go on paper always in this sport. There's always surprises, but uh, very, very even. There's not really any outliers. Oskan of Turkey. And they're right on the outside. And Luke Hurd in seven, uh, six, seventy-six lifetime best. So here we go, eight men in he two. First two automatically qualify, plus the next four fastest athletes on time. And look out for lanes four and three, OJ Edebarun and Joshua Hartman, former European medalist, 200 meter national record holder. What can he do over the 60? It's early days. Especially if someone like him is targeting Paris, can he be his best come the Olympics? Oh, false start. That was an interesting start from Hartman, who had, he had really, his hands looked to be really far apart. He looked to be low and hunched in the blocks. Every athlete's different, they all have a slightly different technique. That's one thing you have to love about track and field. is there's many ways to get the same outcome. Don't all have to have take the same approach and athletes work with what the, you know, the cards they're dealt. And what I mean by that is you know, the, the physical attributes they have and all slightly different strengths and weaknesses. Ulrika Coppola going clear of 5.35. So nice jump from him. Soon we're going to see that bar go to 5.50. As we start to near the business end. Green card for everyone. And I didn't think I saw a false start. And uh, the officials there have just confirmed it. So more of a technical issue than anything. Back into the blocks they go. A lot of these men kick start in their 2024 campaign. What can they do over 60? This will let them, them know and their coaches know how their winter's gone where they're at in their cycle. And look at Hartman, very, very precise how he wants to be in the blocks. This is, that's unorthodox to say the least. Look how low he is compared to the others. Now that is a false start. Oh boy, lane two. And you'd expect that, I think that's a Nuha, isn't it? Kadira Nuha. Same club as Hartman. He looks like he might be gone. Diana Lesti, 6.24, first round. As you can see on the graphic there, what she got. Keep an eye on the board. It's very hard to tell whether they... I look 
a foul. That's a big foul actually from Lesti. Mentioned earlier how it's all electronic now. They don't even need, hardly need to. Uh, actually, the jumps. It all happens for them. This is a replay of that fog start. Oh boy, oh boy. There's no, there's no forgiving that, is there? Sometimes the nerves just get the better. You can almost just fall out the blocks. And he's done exactly that. A new heart. He's gone. Didn't even get a chance to run to open up his 2024 campaign. Third time lucky for these gentlemen then. Look at OJ Edinburgh. He's very, very explosive at the start. But oh, Hartman's top speed's better. Oh, Josh Hartman. Well, he's excited, isn't he? He's showboating. He's happy. It's aggressive. Wow, OJ start there, though. That man to the left of Fitcher's start was fantastic. But uh, Hartman, once he got into his running, comfortable six. 58 and Hartman will be relatively pleased with that not far off his lifetime best he's a man who's building over these over these last few years and then 662 he'll make it through to that final so a quicker quicker heat than heat one the start the, the starts uh, uh, of Hartman I still can't get over it but uh, look at that once he's into the running and you would expect that from a 200 meter specialist just to build and build and build. And it's me just outside that meet record. That's worth keeping an eye on in the final. 6.57. It's going to be very, very close to that. So that's your men's 60 meter heats done. We're going to move over to the women's 60 meter final next. That's going to come at five past five. Grab yourself a cuppa. Because we're just moments away from that. Here we are then, Mikhail Asani. She leads away in this competition. 671. Our competitors, well, she's the always, I guess, the young prodigy, isn't she? The one who's going to be pushing Mahambo over the next few years. Mahambo's going to have to check over her shoulder for this young talent. Here she goes. Very, very fast on the runway. It's exactly what you need to be a world-class long jumper. And that's massive. If that is legal, that is massive. Can she better her 671 lifetime best? She loves this arena, does Asani. Personal best here last year. 12 months later, personal best. And, oh, 672. How about that? One centimeter further. And another personal best. She gives it a, a casual, a casual nod. She's got a long way to go on the board as well. And I think that's why she was actually a little bit frustrated. It was a wry smile. Because she knows she can do better. She knows she's got more in there. Garda Savage then fouled out on her first round. What can she do? Ooh, it looked like that might have been a foul. Again, it might be two for two. No jump. White flag, the official give it, and if it is a white flag, that's going to be long. Now let's have a look. 6.68, challenging for the lead here. Oh, this women's long jump competition is hotting up now. Strap in, the best is yet to come. Romanchuk and Mahambu haven't even got marks on the board. Oh, you don't get better than that. That is a professional jump. Goodness me. Same again, please. I think that's what our coach is going to tell her. Just do that a few more times. Hold step then. 5.50. First time clearance. One of the few men to do that at 5.35. Let's see what this wild and Olympic medalist can do. Big time player. Big time performer. Oh. Straight through. Too much speed, maybe. You've got to admire the, the, the focus 
that those men have to really plant that pole and courage. Well, oh, Malika Mahambu then eyes on. He really goes quiet as she gets to go. Interesting clap rhythm for Mahambu. She likes it fast paced. Look at that stance. Explosive down the runway. You are witnessing one of the best in the world to ever do this event. Oh, great height, but I think that may well be another foul. Let's have a look. Let's wait and see. Straight over to the pole vault then. I think this is Tobert. Oi, clear at 5.50. Comfortable, comfortable as well. He's delighted. Black. Torben Black. Two-time clearance. And that is what you call, call a perfect scorecard so far. And he's got plenty more to go. And I think that's why he's so excited and why he's so fired up. Because I think he thinks, goodness me, I can, I can really compete in the latter, latter stages. Wow, here we go. The women's 60 meter hurdle final. How about this for an introduction then? Let's have a look at some of the big players. Takax, 7.29, qualified. Small Q. And she qualified by time, not position. Of course, only two spots in each heat were automatic. Alexandra Burkhardt, convincing, convincing in her heat. 7.30, the time which saw her through. European champion in the 4x1, 11.01, her lifetime best. She's the fastest over the 100, but this isn't 100 meters, it's 60 meters. It's all about the start. And someone who looked very, very accomplished in her heat was Stefanowicz. Stefanowicz, very, very smooth. Got out the blocks well and held on the three times Balkan champ. Half times national champion as well. Bazalu, it's going to be interesting. Equal time. There's Stefanowicz, the Portuguese athlete. If you missed her heat, 40 years old, 22 national championships she has. And quite. Wow, what can we say about this fantastic talent? Three times German champion. Another athlete who thrives in that relay setting, that team setting, always performing for Germany when it matters over the 4x1. Demi Vanden Wardenberg, 7.42. was the time that saw her qualify for this final. 7.25, her lifetime best. 7.38, her season's best as well. Can she get close to that? If she can run 7.25, she may compete for the victory. And Radikin over. Ooh, so watch out for Burkhardt, Stefanovic, and Bazalu. Bazalu and Stefanovic both level on time in the qualification round. Stefanovic just 24 years of age, and funnily enough, Bazalu. 40, so her 16 years younger is to Bizarro's left as the athletes settle into their blocks and we wait Away they go. It's a very fast start on the inside for Burkhardt. Can Stefanovic get back into this? Oh, is Burkhardt going to hold on? Oh, my goodness. Very, very hard to call. Stefanovic coming like a train. Bazzano as well. But Burkhardt may have won that in the first meter or so. How fast was she out the blocks to the point 
Well, I was almost anticipating a false start for the starter to recall her, but the way Stefanovic is jumping around there, she must have took the victory. Look at this from Burkhardt. It was the first meter or two, and how explosive was she over that next 10? Stefanovic just had to get back on terms, and at this point, it was Burkhardt to lose on the lean. On the lean. Well, there was, in fact, four athletes fighting for one top prize there. But Stefanovic on that angle looks like she crossed the line. Head on angles are always hard to tell. 7.22 lifetime best for Stefanovic and Burkhart. They'll be both be chuffed with that. Quiet on the outside. 7.23. What a tight race this was. 7.24. Takax on the inside of her. Goodness me. Two hundredth of a sec second separating that top four. Well, we'll get those official results for the rest of the field. Shortly, Kifazalu looked like she featured as well, but didn't see her in that top four. Zerna called in, 5.50, first attempt, easy. <laughs> easy as it comes for Zerna call. Bit of relief. Good, little, little bit messy though. Easy on the height, was a little bit messy. Needs to keep those legs a little bit closer together. But hey, what do I know? I'm sure his coach knows a lot more than me when it comes to vaulting. Well, Erju Sazma of Turkey, five time Turkish champ. Eighth in the world in 2022. Oh, well, it was fast, wasn't it? It was even fast through the kind of plant phase. Fanel was at 5.50. However, you can tell he's very compact when he vaults. He's very athletic. We expect to see him go further in this competition. Well, next on the track is the, uh, the women's 1500 meters. That's going to go off at quarter past five. So just in three minutes or so, we've got a we've got a good, a very very good international field, may I say? A few uh, Olympians in that field. Well, this is the first time we're going to see Lil Foss enter the competition, so. What can he do? Currently ranked 15th in the world, which is a very, very good world ranking. And uh, talking of those world rankings, you can oh, good clearance. Good clearance from Lil Foss. Kind of expected it. But uh, your world ranking points will be they, they take an average over several performances and um, it's a, your result score plus your place score um, equals your performance score so your result score um, you get more you get more points depending on the level of the meeting as well there we are wrapping up that women's 60 meters Stefanovic lovely victory 722 and Alexandra Burkhart, 7.22, just losing it on the line. Lorin Vazali, well, she's been a bumped up, actually. Originally, she was, well, outside the top four, but she's been bumped up to third. So that was a tough one for those operating photo finish today, I have no doubt. Three, good jump, very, very smooth jump there. Alice in Greece, 5.50, goes clear. No problems at all. I'll start to look forward to 562. I mean, if we start to see some 570s, 580s come out, and then we really are spoiled. Believe it or not, though, 590 that world qualifying mark for the world indoors in Glasgow. I presume that'll be a very, very similar mark here to the, to the outdoors as well. Der Stabhochsprung, der wird tatsächlich 
Only accepting 12 athletes to the World Championships in Glasgow indoors. They will operate a straight final. Action packed weekend, that is. Ah, oh, unfortunate there. Yeah. So, a failure for Kravchenko. At 550. One more attempt for the Ukrainian. So, by my watch, the women's 1500 is about to get underway. But first, we gotta watch this. This German legend in the pole vault, Raphael Hofstep. Johnny sits and sick. He's gonna have to go clear a 550 and probably clear a 562 if he wants to feature towards the closing stages of this pole vault competition. Only a 550, perhaps came as a little bit of a shock, but it is his first competition of 2024. We can't be too hard on the former world champion, Olympic medalist. Ah, oh, he's gone, fouled it again. Well, pressure's going to be on him. Something he'll be used to competing. He was a big time performer in his prime. Always save his best performances for the World Championships, the Olympic Championships. I was talking earlier around, around that kind of 580, 590 mark. Lots of men have gone clear at that height, but if, you can, if you're able to produce that when it matters um, at the major championships, chances are you can, you can get a top five, top six placing and even sneak into a, into a medal position as well. There's the 1500 meter women's start listing. Well, the internationals towards the back end of that page, Georgia Bell and Reve Walcott Nolan, both of those lead the start list by time. Both very, very established 1500 runners. I mean, Walcott Nolan, semi finalist in Tokyo, recently signed with OAC. And those of you who aren't familiar with OAC, the On Athletic Club Europe. He used to be coached by her, her partner, Dale Clutterbuck. More on that throughout the race, I'm sure. But uh, let's introduce a few of these women in here. Yana Puse. Well, when there's athletes in the field running 403, like the likes of, you know, Walcott Nolan and um, Georgia Bell's like kind of best of 406. Some of these women who have run 420 around that mark, we can't expect them to feature too much. Calabas. Entering the track, Calabis here. Fabian Meyer as well. And don't don't trust those personal bests on screen. I know it says they're personal best, but for a lot of these athletes, that is actually their uh, their indoor personal best, and some of them competed over the last few years indoors so their personal best isn't as quick as uh, what it is outdoors of course Verena Meisel 413 outdoor personal best so uh, watch out for her she can get amongst it she can compete in this here's uh, Van Kampen 410 lifetime best outdoors as well give you that because sometimes it's a little bit more uh, relevant when it comes to 1500 meter running just because a lot of the time athletes just will have one or two performances indoors and go away get back into winter training but uh, this is an interesting prospect interesting runner Georgia Bell of Great Britain 410 lifetime best indoors she set that actually just the other day virtually Frank ran um, and this is what I mean, you know, if you don't get the races indoors, you can end up at the front of the race and front running. So she's worth more than that 410. I expect to see her run quicker than that today. Walcott Nolan then, I said recently signed with that on Athletic Club. Used to be coached by her partner, Dale Clutterbuck. Did a fantastic job with her, getting her to the Tokyo Olympic Games. I'm sure it was a hard decision to, to let her go and encourage her to move to, uh, to OAC. 
but uh, you can't argue against that OAC Europe group at the moment. Here we are in Verde, Vera Cortelia. So, women's 1500 about to toe the line. It's a big old field. I'm interested to see how they negotiate uh, the turns and the banks on this track. I think for 1500 meter running, you can just about get away with these tight turns. I think the straights are long enough that you can get into a rhythm, file in, and then uh, kind of coast yourself around the turns. You haven't got to make any kind of big moves on the bends, or at least, you know, you would have thought coaches would be telling their athletes to avoid doing such things because uh, it is quite like, banked quite harshly here in Dortmund. Beautiful arena though, nice and compact. Fantastic 2,500 fans that could sell this arena out. So away they go then, the women's 1500. World Athletics bronze label tour. I don't believe we got a, we may have a pacemaker just drift around to the front. I haven't had in, any information given to me regarding the pacemaker. And it may well be Cortelia who is slotting in. I expect so, because she's not on the start list originally. So she's going to pace make Georgia Bell and uh, Reve Walcott, Nolan, the two Brits in second and third. I mentioned Georgia Bell already running 4.10 this season, just, uh, what, a few weeks ago now. And uh, looked very good in doing so. Was happy to front run the latter stages of that race as well. And uh, in behind uh, Walcott, Nolan. Tokyo Olympia. Now, I think these two won't mind this competition. They are on paper by far the two quickest in the field. And uh, maybe, well, third place, second, second place, if you take out the pace, make a walk up now with four or three lifetime best. That's the, uh, and she improved on that mark last year. And uh, Georgia Bell sitting in second behind the pacemaker. Well, formerly coached by Jared Payne, I believe she is, and uh, was a fantastic junior. And then had a little bit of time away from the sport. I say time away. Just uh, kept a little bit of a low profile. And now she's back with an absolute vengeance, and uh, by no means professional either. So doing a fantastic job. Working way and competing. So let's get a rough idea of what these women are operating at. 136 would be bang on four minute pace. They're close. They are very, very swift indeed. We could see something very fast for these women if they can hold it. They all look relaxed at the moment. To put that into context, the qualifying mark for Glasgow is 406.50 indoors. And you'd have to run four minutes flat outdoors uh, to uh, your outdoor time because the qualif qualifying window, as we just watch. Raphael Holstep attack this pole vault. Oh, and he's out. He's out. The former world champion, Olympic medalist, is out. And maybe that's to be expected. He is at that stage in his career where you know, injuries and stuff have hosted him. Oh, and another German legend from one German legend to the next. Malika Mahambo in the long jump then. Two failures so far. Got to get a mark on the ball at this stage in the competition. Looks like that might be enough. See, it's a good mark nonetheless, around about 6.50 or so. That will sit her in about third or fourth. And uh, Sani leading the competition with 6.72. So what are these women lapping in now? We're going to get a, a new split. Or are we? Clock on the screen has just disappeared, but it's still Georgia Bell and Reve, Walcott, Nolan. These two know each other very, very well. They're both based or were, I say, as Reve just moved to the uh, OAC Europe group, both based around that London area. And um, similar age as well, competed against each other through those age group championships. Georgia Bell happy to front run, happy to lead. Back to the pole vault, Erzu Sesma of Turkey. Can he go clear at 550? This would be a big upset, a big shock if he doesn't. Comfortable, 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 comfortable. And he stays in the competition. I think that's all he wants. Although his scorecard might not be perfect, he knows he's got enough in his locker to go on and jump 580, 575 if he has to. Well, that's the sound of the bell, Georgia Bell. We've been in and out of this women's 1500. I can tell you not much has changed from Gunter. Gunter now, shall I say, except from Georgia Bell over this last 200 meters, just stolen what? 10 meet, five meters even on Reve Walcott Nolan, who as I say that, looks to close this gap. Walcott Nolan 
Can she get a win in her new colours for OAC Europe? Georgia Bell is going to hang on in there, or is she? She's done a lot of work with Keely Hodgkinson to work on her speed, and she's going to hold on 4 0 Wow, both women inside that World Athletics qualifying mark for Glasgow and the world champions comfortably smashed that meet record she is all smiles and goodness me this is a name that people need to get used to over the next what six months building into Paris because she is starting to light up the track I don't think it'll be long before she signs professionally as well as I said earlier not currently a professional athlete has been building really since COVID. She started getting back into running. She was a fantastic junior. Started getting back into running, doing 5Ks here and there. That's where she seemed to start out. And she's almost done it the wrong way round. She's uh, you know, got back into the sport through 5Ks and worked her way down to the 1500. And potentially even we might see her over the two laps to work on her speed. But yep, I'm not 100% sure, but I do believe she works very closely with Trevor Painter. And Trevor Painter is... Uh, he will be her coach and he is uh, also the coach of Keith Hodgkinson for those that don't know so she is in safe hands and working with the very best in the world over the middle distance meet record for Georgia Bell fantastic performance at one point she came under threat coming off that final turn it would have been easy for her to really tie up she stayed relaxed and took that victory Well, let's have a little watch back of how it all unfolded. And this is the moment I was just talking about. Nice dip of the line for her. She'll be chuffed. She's came. She's got what she came for. And that, no doubt, would have been that World Athletics qualifying mark for Glasgow when a World Championships is on host home soil. You don't want to miss it. Look at that, the mascot. Having a good bit of fun. Picking her up. And, uh, well, to put that into context, she'll walk away with 700 euros as well. Nice victory for her. And uh, Walcott Nolan is second. We'll walk away with 500 euros. Always prize money in the world at Eggs Indoor Tours. And so, a trip worthwhile for George Bell. Well, not too many events left on the track. Men's 400. Heats 2 and 3. Women's 800. At men's 60 final, and we finished the evening with the men's 1500 meter final. About 45 minutes left, so Torben left in 5.62. We've just seen Holstep go out of his competition, bit of a shock for many. He gets the crowd going. That's what we've come to expect at athletics meetings. Firing up the crowd. Volters, they use it to their advantage. They use it to kind of, weirdly, it just gives them that extra bit of rhythm, speed on the runway. This is something they don't get in training. And that's why they just love competing. The atmosphere. That's why athletes love coming to arenas like this, the Clement Hall here in Dortmund. I must say, fantastic. Oh, 562. Well, he's going to need a little bit of work, a few adjustments to come back and clear that. Is Black, the man from Leverkusen. 5.86. Left time best though. What's Romanchuk got? The European champion in the triple jump. Fierce competitor. That's another foul, so she'll be a little bit a little bit frustrated, but you know, being a triple jumper, perhaps she's more interested in like going through the motions of the long jump, putting that impact through her body. The impact in the triple jump is, is is just severe. It really is. Those athletes really do stress their body, put a lot of demand through their bones, through their joints. And um, you do tend to see some of them very injury prone. And it's not a surprise, really. Georgia Bell then with the victory. Reve Walcott known a fantastic run for her. That's actually a personal best for both of them as well. Georgia Bell, big personal best. Meet record to go with it. 
few athletes a little bit further down the field then as well on the Dean Schlicker. 37. Nice PB for her though. A couple of uh, pacemakers DNF in there as well. Well, what can the uh, Viking do here? The Cypriot, Cypriot champion. Oh, great speed, great speed. That looks like it may well improve on her six meters and 25 jump before that. Yeah, Philippa Vitan, 668 lifetime best. She's got a room on the board to go. See official mark. Oh, back to uh, Torben Black then wants to go clear at 562. He didn't see Sazma clear 550. Yes, he did. I was going to say, I haven't seen him attempt 562, uh, is what I meant. So I wonder if he's chosen to, uh, to skip this height. Or not. We, will, we will find out. I am just going off what you guys at home are viewing as well. Oh, I didn't fancy that one. Oh, and because he's gone right through onto the man as well. It is a foul. Ooh, so, that's a frustrating foul to get away to. Not even attempt and, uh, you know, have, have a cross on your scorecard. That's very frustrating. He knows it. He looks frustrated, doesn't he? Okay, Raquel Muller. Personal best in round one. Can she build off of it? Ooh, she may well do. That looks right around that 650 bar. This women's long jump competition is just fierce. A lot. Germany, German athletics do a brilliant job at really attacking the field events. And uh, look, success, it does drive success. And, uh, you know, with Mahambo at the helm, at will, should we say, it's no surprise that uh, they have an array of talent in behind us. So, men's 400 in. Look at that. Kesselin, Vitekov, Smolka, Kijanovic, and Gideon Green. Well, eighth in that mixed relay in 2021 of the Olympic Games as well. So we have an Olympian among us in this race. Oh, Malika Mahambo. I said she uh, looked like she cleared on that third attempt. So 6.65. She's got a mark on the board. Boy, would it be a shock if she didn't. Didn't win this competition in Asani. Well, Asani is, uh, some people are sort of betting on her to, uh, to to really push Mahambo over the next few years and announce herself as a new German long jump queen. Well, she'd have to go some way to contest with this woman though. Oh, that's aggressive. May well be another foul though. And that is going to put the pressure on going into round six. Malika Mahambo waiting. The jump's being measured. We are waiting to see how far 664, so a very similar jump, still sits in third place. And one jump left to, to change that as well. Well, one man to look out for in this 400 meter race. Well, there's Killian Green. I mentioned here, mate, in that mixed relay in Tokyo for Ireland. 46.1 lifetime best outdoors, 46.64 indoors. What can he do there? Well, Bosco Kijanovic, well, 46.22. 
Right time best indoors, 45.50 outdoors. And uh, you know, you're starting to get into, you know, move up the more breakers a little bit when you get into the 45s, so that's for sure. Adam Smolker, check. Looking out for him. Janovic is serving 24 years of age, national record holder. This race is his on paper. But can he execute the perfect race? Can he let off a little bit of frustration why he's not in that fast heat? I'm sure he would love to compete against the likes of uh, Pavel Maslak. He's going to go in that next heat a few minutes after this one. How would the Irishman? Killian Green, get out. Well then, after a long haul, they all get out cleanly. So Green on the outside, but it is Kianovic, who's just going to try and eat up that stagger. But Green looks like as he's gone off with intent and just said, you know what, I'm going to make it as hard as possible for you to come by me. Green's going to get the uh, the added advantage of that downhill at the moment. So Sinan Green of Ireland has stolen a march. Just way too low through the 200 meters. This is going to be a fascinating last lap in this 400. As I expected, Kianovic though, up on his shoulder. Moves by with ease as Green starts to tie up. Kianovic, the class of the field then, putting on a show here in Dortmund in this men's 400 heat two. He was frustrated that he wasn't in heat three. Tying up a little bit himself, but he's going to take the win nonetheless. 47.00. Let's see what that gets, what the official time comes in at. Nice run from him. He would have enjoyed that one. He executed it very, very well. And in fact, Green kind of played into his hands. He gave him something to hunt down on that last lap, didn't he? And um, in fact, once he went past Green, he almost looked to tie up and uh, and slow up as well. I mean, as you'd expect in a 400, that last 100 is always going to be the slowest of the race, isn't it? 46.99. Of course, season's best. We expect to see that by his name. The Serbian national record holder gets his 2024 campaign off to a winner. Well then, Coppola. 562. This height is proving difficult for many of these men. We've seen numerous failures in a height that is within these guys. 20 centimeters within Coppola. Oh, agonizingly close on that one. Well, he thanks the crowd, sinks into their bed. And he'll pack himself up and go again. That was close and uh, shaking off that festive period, a New Year period, no doubt. But uh, he'll be a little bit gutted with that, I'm sure. Well, Becky Romanchuk. European Triple Jump Champion in 2022. I think she'd like to compete a little bit better in this long jump competition, I must say, as we go into round five. Torben Black. Can he go clear? He would have just seen Coppola fail, which means he can go on to win this competition, but he's got to clear this height first. We haven't seen Sazma, as you Sazma of Turkey, go clear at 562. We haven't seen him attempt it, so we presume he is skipping 562 altogether. He's done it again. He's done it again. Whoa, he's almost psyching himself out, and that is a sorry way to go out the competition for Black. Not even attempting 562. Okay, the man Chuck then finally on the runway and ready to go. Attacks the board. Well, brilliant height. Soars through the air. 
And I think that's come through as a foul because they're not jumping into the pit to measure it automatically yet. There you are, it's a foul. So how frustrating for her if she's only going to get one mark on the board. Let's see what she can do in round six. But that, explosive, good height, and good distance. So then, this man's 400, heat three. Five men to go in this. Nguyen, next stage here, Nguyen. Sixteen time Hungarian champ. Oh, that's a good mark. That's gonna bump her up. Bump her result up, the ranking for sure. As we await the mark, so does she. 616. No, it's not. Well, there you are. Optical illusion. It is amazing. You, you meet a professional long jump coach and they just have an eye for it. They know exactly what a good jump is. They can almost hear, hear a good jump, feel a good jump. Well, men's 400 did. Tybosh. We got Tybosh in lane one, Fabian Dammerman, Christine Agusel, Ben Higgins, a great Britain, and uh, Pavel Maslak on the outside. Well, what can we say about that man? Indoor world champion 14, 16, and 18. European champion 2023, 2017, and 2015. He was an indoor king in his time, was Pavel Maslak. He was almost unbeatable. Ben Higgins in, the youngster from Great Britain. What can this man do? Sixth. And then four by four in 2022. British champion in 2022 was Higgins as well. Oh, the Belgian. Iguacel, 46-81. This is going to be a very competitive 400. I think a lot of these men are very, very close. Unlike that previous race where Kilovic was away and clear. I think these men are going to be fighting to the wire. Darmament. Fabian Darmament. 45-94 lifetime best outdoors. So he's worth a lot more outdoors than he is indoors. Hasn't quite been clicking for him on the short track in Tibosh. Lijo Tibosh. Okay, what can Maslak do here? Is he anywhere near the form that we've seen him produce over the last 10 years indoors? His best place, believe it or not, outdoors was fifth at the World Championships. Other than that, he's never made a World Championship final despite being the indoor world champion on numerous occasions. Ben Higgins, this is a great opportunity for him to uh, compete on the circuit, British champion. Pick up a bit of prize money as well, show his worth. Super talent. Away they go, and this is a much more even start, isn't it? These athletes are well matched on the back straight. But look at Higgins. He's not frightened of a former world and European champion indoors. He's going to go straight by Maslak. Can Maslak respond off this top end? He's going to get a little bit of momentum. He's going to get a little bit more speed than Higgins. Coming off a steeper bank, but Higgins, this is a super aggressive first 200 meters or so. He's going to go into the back straight. He really needs to relax at this point and wait for Maslak to kind of come up on his shoulder. Because if he can hold Maslak off round this bend, he's in with a chance of winning this one. Higgins, the Brit, the former British champion of 2022. He's looking to hold off Maslak the whole way. Can he win his first competition of 2024? He's tying up on the wire. So's everyone. So's Iguessel of Belgium as well. Higgins is going to take it. No clock on screen. Oh, 47.59. Is that the official time? We'll wait and see. Not a bad start. These 400 runners really do build into the season, so expect them to do that. And the thing is as well, to go so aggressive, if he just measures that effort a little bit more, I think he'll be delighted. But the biggest thing is learning to win, learning to win indoors. It's a different ball game. It's not so much about times because of the dynamic. 400 runners are not used to sharing lanes. They're not used to having to hold off athletes and overtake athletes. Within uh, you know sharing the same same bit of track, but uh, that's a nice 700 euros banked for Higgins. Well, he's going to be. You expect to see him on that 4x4 team for Great Britain indoors. I think he's been on it. 
in the past few years as well. Last year, sixth at the European Championship, so in the relay. There we are in Higgins, 47.57. Strong. And Gustav, 47.74. Look at that, Pavel Maslak. Well, he's at the latter stages of his career. It's great to see him still competing. 48.02. We'll let him off. So it was Kianovic, and I said he would have been frustrated not being in that faster section, but he's still come out on top. 46.99. So, in fact, he will take the prize money home. It won't be Higgins. Smolka, Green there, tied up. 48.73. Felix Jan, Tybosch as well. Down there, 51.1. And Martin, disqualified, unfortunately. We saw that little while ago. And that was heat one. That was around about oh, an hour or two ago. Well, I believe this is uh, this is actually uh, Morales of uh, Greece. So it's, uh, it's not Sazma. So ignore the graphic here. Emmanuel Cardales. Second at the European Championships last year indoors. Great performer. Again, performs under pressure, perform when it counts. Fourth, it went agonizing fourth at Olympic Games in 2021 as well. He's going to look to get on the medals this year. Greece has always had some fantastic vaulters over the years. Oh, completely slipped out his hand. Grip completely went. That's him out of the competition. Unfortunately, passed the 562. Claps the crowd, ignore the scorecard because that is not Sazma of Turkey. Well, here goes Malika Mahambodin. Come on, we need a bigger jump. The crowd want a bigger jump. They want to see her at her very best. 730 personal best. However, she's building into her season, she's building back up, and she's going to look to defend her Olympic title throughout 2024. Malika Mahambo. On the runway, it's clear. Into measure. Oh, that doesn't look like it's going to be much better than what she's already got on her scorecard. I'm not sure that's going to be much further than 660. Let's wait and see. Decent on the board. She can't complain too much about that. Perhaps just uh, in a heavy period of uh, strength training this time of year. And like I said, it, it's it's very hard for those who are looking to really peak in Paris to 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 even be anywhere near their best this time of year. Well, Zerna called in. First time clearance at 550. Skip 562 altogether. Here he is at 572. First first attempt was a failure. He's going to be amongst the, uh, the top. What what is going on today? We've seen this so many times from these vaulters. They're just going straight through, not having the confidence to plant. He's almost analysing the uh, the box. He plant the bottom end of that uh, pole in. And this, I think, is just a, just an example, to be honest with you, of uh, of their first competition of the season. You know, just having that confidence. The latter stages of the year, you know, when they are in peak competition season, they don't think twice about vaulting. And I think this time of year, they're like, oh, I haven't done this in a while. Although they would have done in training, of course. Um, well, Homia. Six twenty-four. She can just get up. Improve on that. She'll be straight up. The table. Well, here's Urzu Sasmadin. So clear at five fifty. Past the five sixty-two. I thought so. Now again. Just like a few others. Failure at five seventy-two. Goes clear, and he's the first man to do so. And ladies and gentlemen, you may well have just witnessed the winning jump 
in this men's pole vault because, you know, Zernical is still in this competition. However, he's got one more attempt to 572, so the pressure is on. Canales as well. Good jump from Sergio. Just nicked it with his knee, didn't he? This is what I'm often saying about the pole vault. It's not the height that these athletes worry about. It's getting the distance to kind of arch and get over that, get over that pole. Well, next on the track is the women's 800. We're just waiting for them. Ah, oh, there we go. As we speak, out comes the start list. Last eyes on that. Give it a good, give it a good preview. Some great talent. Amongst these women, there we are on the setup. Herkiba. It's a very, very, very competitive field, this women's 800. A lot of these women are around about that two minute mark. The one you want to look for is Tanya Spill. That's her there. She's a two flat runner outdoors, two or three indoors, so we expect her you know, oof, uh, to, to really to really contest and take this race by the scruff of the neck, I think. Almost a full German lineup. Dutch athlete Lizanne De Witt in here as well. But Marie Becker, watch out for Becker. 202 outdoors as well, her lifetime best. So really, two two minutes is the benchmark of world class athletics. But in the way the way the event's gone over the past few years, well, there's Lisanne De Witt. Ignore her. I suppose uh, personal best there. She's run a little bit quicker outdoors. Dutch athlete. But uh, but as I was saying just previously, yes, world class. 800 meter running is usually two minutes inside, but now I think the event's moved on another level. These standards to go to Olympics and world champs have moved on another level. He's operating and looking at running 158. Um, and and that's really where the event's gone. And I think for, for females in general, the way the sport is going seems every year absolutely record breakers, especially in these distance events and you know, across the board. The women is outperforming men when it comes on a global level. This Bellari in of Greece. Well, she's going to be up against it. 210 lifetime best to, to really hang with Tanya Spill. And Tanya Spill, you hope she has a pacemaker in this. We've seen a few pacemakers in the previous events. And um, Ter Young there, right on the inside. And you can't. 2-8. Lifetime best, 212 seasons best. So here we go. Off they go. Nice clean start for all of these athletes. Is they're going to break over on that fast side? Comes steaming off the bank. It looks quite aggressive early on in this women's 800. Someone who's not here is Alina Amant, the German champion, as we cut straight to Romanchuk in the long jump. So we don't get to see too much of this women's 800. It's going to be over and done with before we know it, but Becker Romanchuk to go. Final, final attempts in this women's long jump. Sixth round as we draw to a close. We've just got a few more track events to go. What a fantastic day, evening, afternoon we've had here in Dortmund. Uh, back here in my chat, remind you up. That is, uh, well, it's a white flag. At least that jump will count. Oh, look at this. The field completely splits up. Completely cut apart. Let's identify a few of these athletes early on. Quite difficult. There's the clock. 59.9. Identify Tanya Spill as well. So, oh, and again, it's just not kicking for Corrales today. It's not clicking for many of those male pole vaulters over on the far side. So, 
Identifying if Spill is starting to get amongst it. Yes, she is. Spill sitting there in second place. Tanya Spill in the leading way at the moment. That's uh, Becky up. And Marie Becky up potentially. But uh, Tanya Spill sitting in second place. That's right where you want to be going into this final lap. However, look coming up on her shoulder right on the outside. That's a big, big move. Can Spill respond? I don't think she's got it in her, to be honest with you. And she's going to lose out here. Tanya Spill is going to lose out to Becca, who's come storming through. What a fantastic world judge. Definitely. Suo, 489. Fantastic run from Becca. Yeah, Marie Becca, awfully close to her lifetime best as well. 2-2 two, two outdoors. Well, she drew a big season, if you ask me. Operating at those sorts of speeds early on in this campaign, you're only going to get faster, stronger, and fitter throughout the next few months. There you are, Tanya Spill there in second place. As well, so... Well, great racing from those uh, women in the 800 meters. Men's 60 meter final is up next. So from one speed event to another. Here we go. Zernical. Oleg Zernical. Well, if he doesn't go clear at 572, Sazmas is in the driving seat to take this. Currently sits in second. That's only because he's still in the competition. A lot of men chose to pass at 562. Almost like mutual agreement, actually. Chose to challenge themselves and get right up. This is, these men must just be psyching themselves out today because it's an absolute surprise to see them not even get their, their kind of run up correct in order to attempt. Um, Zernical very frustrated, done that twice over at 572, but hey, he's gonna have to move on. He's gonna have to start, understand what went wrong as well. So, Jana Marie Becker, fantastic run, 2487. Tanya Spill, 2529. Personal best for Jennifer Hall, 2577. Steaming through Hawk and then, uh, well, I was leading the way. Spill went by her and then Becca went by her. A fantastic race. The lead chops have changed over that last 150 metres or so. So, speedsters, this 60 metre men's final gets ready. Look at this, Lara Muller, worldly 681 out of nowhere. Out of absolutely nowhere. She is delighted. Whoa, we've got to get a replay on this. What a jump. Well, there we are. And Eva Beck is congratulating her. What a day for German athletics. A world lead. Goodness me. Well, we came into this competition thinking Asane was the one to watch. She was the one challenging. But look at Raquel, Lara Muller. How about that? Well, how can the world Olympic champion respond? Can she answer? Saturday, the 20th of January, 2024. It's the Olympic year. We're building up to Paris. How's Mahambo? What sort of shape is she in? That was aggressive, potentially too aggressive. As she fouls out here in Dortmund. She claps, she acknowledges the crowd. Well, they'll support her no matter what. They want to see that woman defend her Olympic title. And we'll trust her for now. We'll trust that she's going to be in peak form come this summer. But she's a competitor. She'll be frustrated that she's lost today. And here we are as we get a close-up. As we see those men warm up. 
I can't believe it though. Lara Muller, her personal best for today, 651 to finish with 64 points, potentially win the competition overall. Fantastic. Oh, Emmanuel Carales then. One of the few men left in this competition. These men seem to be cursed at the moment. Very few have actually managed to attempt some of their previous vaults. A lot of men just going straight through the pit. Look how he's just got that slightly on an angle. He's straightened up as he approaches, as he runs. Okay. He's what what is going on? I am absolutely baffled. Just scratching my head. I wish I had a pole vault expert next to me right now just to explain exactly what these men are going through and what they are thinking because I'm getting deja vu. We've seen it time and time again. These men have failed out, but not by not through attempt. They're not going to be able to plant the pole. Well, what can the Serbian do here? Good on the board. That's a, that's a big jump. Galasevic, the nine-time Serbian champion. 6.69, minor improvement. We'll stay in third. Job done. Job done. Nice competition for her. And a good, good, good series of jumps as well. That's uh, That really is the key. Two events left on the track then. The men's 60 meter final and the men's 1500 meters. Looking forward to watching both. So can Asani respond? Interestingly, you don't often see this. Close to save her legs, save her energy. Two big jumps to start. She perhaps wouldn't have been expecting Laura Muller to jump so far on her final jump. And she now sits in second place. Asani's won here before, she's personal best here before, she's done it again today, she fouls out, she knows it straight away as she hops out the pit. Perhaps the crowd, she'll have to settle for second place, however, she's going to be the defending Olympic champion, so she can't complain, she's all smiles and she's walked away with her lifetime best. What a start to 2024. And ladies and gentlemen, German long jumping is in very, very good hands talent we've seen on display today. And there you are. Mula Asani and Gardasevic and Hambo having a set up for fourth. Not often you'll see her that far down the results page. Nice PB there for Caroline Klein. 619. Here we go then. The men's 60 meter final. OJ Edebarun takes lane four. Dead center. Josh Hartman. Well, he looked good in his heat, didn't he? Check Corelli. Oh, what can he do? The European indoor champion. Henrik Larsen as well. He came with a late run. Uh, Tan Oskan. Oh, it's a fantastic line. Mouth watering lineup. Let these men be introduced. Oh, Kijanovic. Leska Kijanovic qualifying with 6.77. We saw Bosco Kijanovic in the 400. I'm not 100% sure there is any relation there. There may well be. Oh, check your rally then. 6.69. Telling the crowd to calm down, the European indoor champion. Well, maybe he's telling the crowd and telling himself that as well because it was a bit of a shock upset. It is early in 2024. Josh Hartman shaking his head. Not going to lose, perhaps he's telling us. Not going to lose. There he is. Little wag at a finger. Swagger from the man. OJ Edeburen then. 662. Always confident. The Brit backs himself. Enjoys the indoor circuit. 
enjoys this 60 meter. Askovic, well, what a run he had coming through with a late, late run as well on the line. 667 automatically qualified him, perhaps unexpectedly as well. He's fired up. These men want to get their season off to a winning start. Can you blame them, ladies and gentlemen? Your men's 60 meters. 60 meter final. Mick Larson, former under 23 European champion as well. Marv uh, Lemich, then 663 in his heat. Oh, Tan Osgan as well on the outside. So, as always in the sprints, expect a bit of an arrow formation. Unlikely you will see too much of that. I think it's going to be a very, very tight one in the line. I'll apologise in advance if I can't call it because the heats were ridiculously close. The women's 60 final was ridiculously close as well. I think 200th of a second separated first to fourth. The lights come on. Kianovic, Ciccarelli, Hartman, Ediburin. Askovic, Larson, Flemich, and Oscar settle into their blocks. If you're just joining us, keep an eye on Hartman's, Hartman's stance when he's in the blocks. It's incredibly low. The German national record holder over a 200, getting ever so close to that 20 second barrier, 20 0 2. Oh, he's almost in a press up position there. Look how low his head is to the ground. Oh, it's a false start. That's got to be Larson. It's got to be Henrik Larson. Well, he got bronze at the European indoors last year. Cameras are honing in on him. Ah, oh, it's obvious. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. He'll be very, very frustrated. It's interesting. When athletes are in this position, I sometimes wonder, what are you even waiting for? He's only going to be gone and showed the red card. He'll wait, perhaps a little bit of hope, but uh, oh, he's going to he's going to fight his corner here. And he's going to say, "I couldn't hear." The Swede. Oh, he's calling over a senior official. We're going to have a little discussion. And while they do that, we'll get back over this call. Ozu Salzma. Here at 572, 582. This would be a big mark to uh, to start his 2024 campaign off. Southmar, good run up. Is he going to run through like many men have done this afternoon? No, he's not. He's got this competition in the bag. He's going to have two more attempts at that 582. Good vaulting from the man. Competition one. Not a fun start for him. Well, whatever happened, Larson's false start looked as blatant as any I've seen, but he is in and he's going to line up. So... He must have heard a bit of noise. And they're letting him run. He may be running under protest, which means his result won't count anyway. And he just wants to have a run out. But he's going to compete against the rest of these seven men. Get away first time there as well. Larson looks competitive. Look at Askovic on the inside. Hartman's going to pull through. And you know what? A turn of events. I think Larson gets it. At the line there. Oh boy, well this will be controversial if Henrik Larsson gets the win because he looked like he clearly false started. Josh Hartman congratulates him. No hard feelings, especially this time in the season. And the type of competition it is as well, World Tour. They're all just trying to improve at this stage in this season. Askovic got out very, very well. OJ Edeburen left in the blocks, left for dead actually. Hartman then looks to be edging it here, and Larson comes through. Hartman's dipping too early. His hand's out. He loses momentum. He could have waited another stride before he's trying to put his hand out. 
and shoulder out to uh, to dip for the line. Larson's continued meet record with 6:55. Look, it's counted. I'm just as baffled as you are at home. Josh Hartman in second, 6:59. Great running at 6:55. I believe that is inside that world qualifying mark as well. I'll just double fact check that. And yes, it is 6:58 to Hartman as well. He's been that mark. So those two. Expect to see them in Glasgow for sure. Fantastic running from the 10 times. Swedish champion winning is what he does. And he's delivered here in Dortmund as well. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That crowns off the evening. On the sprint side at least. We've got the men's 1500 meters to go. Well, Erzu Sazma limbering up, getting ready for his second attempt at 5.82. The Turk, to be honest with you, has just been the strongest and the most consistent throughout the competition. He sits in the lead, but uh, here you go, your men's 60 metres for final. Final results, so despite false starting, Henrik Larsson continued on and 6.55 meet record. He heard a noise, so he's reinstated. Josh Hartman, 6.59. Alexander Askovic, 6.63. Season's best. Fantastic display of events. And OJ de Buren, surprisingly, all the way down in eighth there. And Ciccarelli, well, for a European champion, also very surprising to see him in fifth. Slow start to his campaign in 2024. What a race. What an indoor meeting we've had here in Dortmund. Fantastic packed out arena, almost a sellout. I suspect 2,000 odd fans in this newly renovated arena. Well, renovated in 2019. They went from four lanes to six. Just push that track back a little bit, but you can tell how long the straights are here from that 60 meter runway. Whoa, those who sazmed in. Got this pole vault competition wrapped up. Anything now is a bonus. No chance. No chance. One more attempt. Can he fire himself up? Can he be motivated? And uh, actually, he claps out, and it almost looked like he told the official there, do you know what? I'm, I'm done. I'm done. Uh, there's no need for me to push it. Finished. Shakes hands. And there we are. Your men's pole vault winner here in Dortmund. Well, one more event left in. It's the men's 1500. Uh, the men's pole vault wrapped up. The women's long jump has been wrapped up. So we turn our attention to that men's 1500 meters. We finish with a little bit of mid distance fireworks. And there's the pole vault. Ozu Salzman in 572 clear. And look at that. 550, 550, 550, 550, 550. All the way down to Coppola in six. And interestingly, they all suffered the same problem. They just couldn't plant the pole in order to even attempt it properly. So joint second for Zernico, Lil Foss, Carales, and Black. Lovely little words to the crowd thanking them. I think all athletes appreciate the crowd. It really does add to the atmosphere. And this is why, actually, a lot, a lot of athletes almost, not to say they prefer indoors, but, uh, you know, it's, it's a very intimate event. It's very atmospheric. Noise travels. It echoes around these arenas. It always feels lively. It really does. Well, over on the far side, it looks as though 
I can see those male 1500 meter runners entering the arena, or they will be at least at some point. Wait, we're a little bit behind schedule. This event was due to go up at five past six. We're now quarter past six, so a little bit behind schedule here in Dortmund. But uh, if you missed anything, if you missed any of the action, of course, rewind. We're live on European Athletics YouTube channel, but uh, it will be up for you to see now on YouTube, even when the event finishes as well. So go back, watch the races, and enjoy anything that you've missed throughout the afternoon. This is a bronze label World Athletics Continental Tour and interestingly there is a whole bunch of world tours to come. I mean there's seven gold, le um, gold label meetings indoors, there's 17 silver and 15 bronze meetings um, throughout the next couple of months and culminating in the World Championships in Glasgow. But uh, here we are in the men's 1500 metre final, Yassin Abdila, Christopher Maximilian Scrake. Yao Basotti, Adios in there as well. Arata Ibrahim, Jan Grimuth, and uh, one man I'm looking particularly forward to seeing is Brian Kerman. As we introduce these men, 1500 meter runners, male 1500 runners. <laughs> <clears throat> Brian Coleman is the standout on paper, 333 outdoors. This is going to be his debut indoors. First, Abdullahi. Well, he's got it all going for him, hasn't he? Physically, he looks, you know, very, very smooth when he runs. He's a huge talent. But uh, he's got some way to go before he really cracks into the, well, even the top of the German rankings, let alone the European and global rankings. Teammate there as well. Wow, Basotti, uh, basically three times national outdoor champion, 30 years of age now. Again, super, super smooth move up over the indoor track. Interesting to see these athletes having a stride once that light drops off them. Once that torch drops off and they're striding in the dark. Well, Marius Prost of Germany. What a talent he is. Sixth of the European indoors in Glasgow. Two-time national 1500 meter champ, including 2023, the current champion as well. Former year round 23 champion, Prost. Oh, Ibrahim Arata. Very, very strong runner. 333 outdoors. Not so good indoors, not so strong, but I think that's more the lack of opportunities he gets indoors. So it's exciting to see what he can do. 47 lifetime best. Brian Coleman, cool karma collected. So often can you announce a rising star on the indoor circuit, don't they? And he's just gone and stood right next to those lining up. No strides for him. Well, he's ready to go. So often athletes, they're nervous strides almost just to fire them up. Well, Sven Wagner then. 339, lifetime best. Eighth of the German Nationals. 337 outdoors, Wagner. Very, very good. And Jan Delmuth then. Three forty-seven. Well, he's going to be excited to be a part of this. One he's going to learn a thing or two. He's going to be up against it. There we are. Some of the key figures. Basotti. Keep an eye out for him. Even him at Atta as well. Oh, Turkey. Three thirty-eight man. Saucy 335 outdoors, his lifetime best. Prost as well, 335, his lifetime best. These athletes, well, once upon a time, 335 will qualify you for Olympic Games or World Championships. Not anymore, that stand is getting harder and harder. And in this meet, those world rankings over 1500 are just outstanding. However, 336.00 is the qualification mark indoors for these gentlemen. 
but they can get anywhere near a lifetime best. That would see them qualify for Glasgow. And away they go then, Sober Saucy, two to four. Brian Coman, he's saying, come along now, come along, go in front. He's telling the pacemaker what he wants. Well, we don't really know what to expect with this young gentleman. We know he's run 333 outdoors. He's never run indoors, so let's see how he goes on the short track, on the boards here in Dortmund. This is the final event at this fantastic indoor meeting. 28-0 through the first 200 meters. Oh boy, well, and he looks comfortable, doesn't he, Brian Coman? The rest of the field slotting in behind him. Prost as well, the German, the established German. Knows exactly what he's doing. Brian Coman comes alongside the pace when he says, you're just not going quick enough, pick it up for me. Well, it's, it's it's a tricky one, isn't it? Because if he's not going quick enough, I think just go by. Just go by. And finally, he does. Brian Coman. 57-0. So we're on for, well, low 330s at this stage. And uh, he's going to need to run that if he's going to compete at the World Indoor Championships in Glasgow. Maybe this Kenyan talent, he looks very, very smooth, very comfortable. Is it all for show? Look at the mascot having a great time in the sand pit. The rest of the world, well, the pacemaker still stays in this race. He's going he's gonna to hang on in there. He's going to pace Prost at this point as well. He's probably more familiar with Prost than he is uh, Coleman of Kenya. So through 600. So slowing every lap. Every lap getting slower to this point. That was a 30-second lap. And now it won't be long before they're, they're actually off schedule. And you can see athletes starting to bunch. It's all about being smooth at this point. Arata looks good back in the pack. Basotti as well just looks to be head back at the moment. A little bit under stress, potentially. So Coman dictating this race. He was uh, egging the pacemaker to go quicker. Instead, he went in front, and then he actually slowed it down. So uh, I'm sure the pacemaker now looks like he's getting a bit itchy. Looks like he wants to move things up. Cross tucks in his second. And it started to bunch. It started to bunch at the key time. Brian Coman of Kenya. He's letting the field go by him. He started to jog. What is this man doing? Well, it's his debut on the boards, on the short track. And it certainly looks like it, doesn't it? 3.33 outdoors. His agent was excited to get him over here. Get him, see what he can do. And now he's starting to pick up. He's playing around with it. And this is what I, I love to see this. He's a natural talent as well. Get louder, the mascot says. Well, we're going to come up to 400 meters to go. What would be on an outdoor circuit? Two laps of this track. Cross perhaps getting a bit frustrated now with the Kenyan. He's going to move. He's going to look to go by. Yes, he is. Here goes Wagner as well. Plus, well, this is a good run if he can win it. Can he hold on? Brian Coleman of Kenya is in third. He looks to have not much left at all at this stage. And here goes Plus. Well, former European under 23 champion he's been there he's done it and now he's put it on a show here in Dortmund it's almost like he didn't have the confidence to go by Coman a little bit of a fear factor maybe kept in not knowing what to expect but look at him go now he's in his groove and he's all on his own he can enjoy this last lap if it stays like this unless something radical happens over the final 200 150 meters and Prost is just squeezing it pouring it on now Brian Coman seems to have woken up from that days he was in on the previous laps and he's responded, he's in second place. He's not gonna get him in near Prost of Germany, waving to the crowd. And you know what? With the way that race was run, 340.19 is not a bad time. That time does not reflect how that race was run. Coman, hands on head as he goes past the line. Well, it's a name we might want to look out for in future. He's certainly entertaining to say the least. Oh, cool karma collected from Prost though. Put on a show for his home crowd. Marius, congratulations. And you know what? His indoor personal best is only 340.3, so I think he's inside that. If that time is official. And it is. It's a world lead. Well, I was looking at a world lead and I thought 344. I think that's going to go. And uh, so he'll take that on the chin. He'll top the rankings in 2024 for now. They expect to see a lot more of those world lead at WL at the end of people's result over the next few weeks and months. But uh, Marius Pross, well, he's very happy with that. And you know what? That was a fantastic last 200. Need to go back and look through the splits. Basotti, disappointing. Arata, disappointing. Wagner, a little bit disappointed. Coleman, disappointed. Like for to be honest with you, but I think it was the way the race was run to go out so hard. And, and you know what? To go out hard when you're in prime shape, um, you know, in the peak of a track season, doesn't 
matter too much because you really are sharp at that point but to go out hard for your first race of the season when you probably haven't done much speed work at all and you're in heavy strength training the legs are heavy it's really going to be a shock to the system and no one could cope bar prost he dominated that field by four seconds or so well that concludes the meeting in dortmund there's the results once again marius prost no doubt about it Four seconds or coming over that final four, four, five hundred meters or so. Sven Wagner, three, three thirty-four. Ibrahim Arata, well, personal best indoors, but three thirty-eight outdoors, way off of that. Bram Andresen as well, three forty-six. Yal Basotti, Skrik as well, and Zoltan, three thirty-eight. So a fascinating fifteen hundred meter matchup here. But uh, that is all from here in Dortmund. Thank you for tuning in. I've been your commentator, Matt Selen, for the day. If you've missed any of the action, go back on YouTube. Watch it back on the European Athletics YouTube channel. There is plenty more World Athletics Continental Tour action or global tour action over the next few weeks indoors. We have some double headers next week in France. So look out for those and get familiar with the calendar. Head over to that European Athletics and World Athletics website because the action comes thick and fast as we build towards Glasgow. And beyond that, the European Championships in Rome in the summer and, of course, that Paris Olympics in July, August time as well. See you next time. Thank you for tuning in. Have a good night. Stunden voller Leichtathletik gewählt mit dem ein oder anderen.